Supernatural Life family. What's going on, guys? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So good to be here with you guys. Give me just a second. Get everything straight over here. Man, it's going to be an awesome teaching today for real. I believe we're going to dive deep. I believe it's going to be very impactful. And uh, I believe you're going to be blessed tremendously. So anyway, if you're just tuning in for the first time, wherever you're tuning in from, from, make sure you like the broadcast, subscribe if it's your first time ever being on here, and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of every time that we are live. Also, make sure you share. Let's push this out to everybody that needs to see it so that they can be blessed and changed and transformed for God's glory. We need a lot of people on fire in these last days in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I see so many people tuning in from so many different places. God is good. May he get all the glory for everything that happens today. So recently I had an angel teaching I put brought out and I told you guys I was going to jump deeper into that. So today we're going to jump into part two of that, which is how to see angels. Now, I know I know when I say something like that, some people go, oh, no, you know, I don't know about that. And I don't know about this and and all those things. Well, I'm going to I'm just going to be OK. I promise we're not going to be scary Christians. OK, we're, you know, there's a supernatural side to God, too. Right. Why do demons get to show up more than angels do? Ah, I bet that convicted somebody. You know, a lot of us have a easier time seeing demons manifest than we do seeing angels manifest, right? When it, when the truth is, it's all throughout the Bible. But once again, before I jump into the teaching, welcome to wherever you're tuning in from. I want to shout out from where some of you guys are uh, tuning in from. Let me put it in the chat and I'll, I'll go ahead and shout out your hometown. We got Haiti. Oh my goodness. Denver, Boston, Mass, Minnesota. Hawaii is in the house, London, Ottawa, Canada, Fresno, California, Tucson, Arizona, Birmingham, Alabama, Cali, Montrose. We got Alabama, Elizabethtown, Kentucky, Jacksonville, Alabama, South Africa. We got Alaska, East Tennessee. We got, yep, Sinead from South Africa. Good to see you, my friend. Kansas City, Australia, Glendale, Arizona, Charleston, South Carolina, Butler, Wisconsin, Buffalo, New York, Waycross, Georgia, Cleveland, Wisconsin, Averett, Washington, San Diego, Levittsburg, Ohio, Borger, Texas. The UK is in the house. Some of y'all staying up late, huh? We got Global Vision Bible Church, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. I see you guys. Y'all always come in deep showing support. Pennsylvania, Indianapolis, Norman, Oklahoma, Man Manitoba, Canada. The nations are here. My goodness. Scotland is even in the house. Fiji is in the house. Vent uh, Venture, California. We got uh nsw australia north south wales i think is how, what that is black all australia look at all the australians y'all y'all are really showing up tonight fort lauderdale florida well, it's nighttime for me uh bellevue new england i think is that right new, no nebraska i don't know <laughs> it's one of them new jersey we got martinsville indiana willard ohio copenhagen denmark is in the house i've been there before believe it or not twice i believe we got brazil is tuning in come on somebody virginia alabama is here south carolina wisconsin greensville south carolina south australia boogie down bronx is in the house guys look at this we got the whole world literally tuning in today come on somebody all right i want to tell you guys also um, what I'm doing on my teachings now, so I'm going to be doing more teaching streams. Can somebody say amen? That means you're going to be a lot more teachings coming. Um, Y'all have seen all the encounters. You know what God can do. We know he, he can work in supernatural power, but the, the, the body of Christ needs teaching, and teaching is what's going to sustain. Encounter is good to bring people in, but once they come in, you have to sustain them with the word. They have to have a foundation uh, to be built on. I want to encourage you guys to always go back and listen to other teachings too. It's going to help you. It's going to build you. It's going to grow you. Also, I have my first book out, Supernatural Living. You want to go right there on Amazon. You can find it. Type in Supernatural Living. It's awesome. It's really good foundational stuff to get you started and get you going and living the supernatural life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, guys, I got a lot of stuff coming up. My 2023, I'm going to let you guys know now, 2023 is almost packed out. It's getting there already. 
So I, I don't know if anybody's watching this, you're having a hard time pulling the trigger or wanting me to come out or whatever, you, you better go ahead and make your request known. And we're having to pray over with requests now, too, because so many people are hungry uh, to have a move of God wherever they are. Right now, I am think I'm going over 10 nations, over 10 nations. So whatever country, and some of them nations include Australia. That's right, my Australian brothers and sisters. We come into Australia. I'm going to Thailand. As long as none of these people could put these restrictions in place, if you can read between the lines, you know what I'm saying. Some places are getting crazy again. I'm going to do a Europe tour. That means I'm going to be touring Europe. Okay, that means places like the Netherlands, uh, UK, uh, Ireland, Germany, places around all around there. That's where we'll we'll be coming to. Okay. Uh, I also we got. I think I'm going to be coming to probably Canada at some point. Mexico, Puerto Rico. My goodness, I'm just. I'm just going everywhere. The whole world's in his hands, right? So if you're going to have a global ministry, you got to be able to move global, right? So we're going to, I'm going to be seeing a whole lot of, yes, Norway too, a whole lot of you guys that are watching me here on the internet. I'm going to actually be able to come shake your hands. I'm very personable when I get in person. I love to meet people. So um, you're going to get to meet me and I'm going to just bring Jesus with me. So we're just going to love Jesus together is what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, on these teachings, guys, if you're a forerunner, that means if you're investing in the ministry, you're a part of the ministry, it means that you've, you've, you've said, I want to be discipled by what this ministry offers. What I'm doing on the teachings is having a forerunner live audience. That means there is right now, Zoom is active over here. So that means at the end of the teachings, I'm going to take some time to pray for some people, okay, and uh, just encourage them, edify them, prophesy, healing, deliver, whatever God wants to do for whoever's on here. So if you want to be a part of that, go to the supernaturallife.org and become a forerunner today. We email the Zoom links out. I still will be doing all-inclusive Zoom calls in the future. What that means is for everybody all over the place, okay? So there will be still all-inclusives in the future, but I tend to like to help, I like to help the forerunners a lot because they have chosen to be discipled through here. But we're discipling everybody. That's why the, that's why these teachings are all for anybody that wants to watch them because we believe discipleship is for everybody and we want to impact the kingdom of God, not just one exclusive movement, right? We're not exclusive. We are inclusive of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen, 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 obviously. Okay, um, lots of other stuff. I'm doing a whole lot of collabs, guys, with a lot of people, a lot of conferences. Uh, we we're gonna. I'm just gonna be with a lot of people. So you guys catch one of the conferences you want to go to and just be there. Uh, good news for Texas. We will be doing the next Forerunner conference in Texas. So all you Texans, hallelujah, you're gonna get to have the next Forerunner conference out that way. God is good. Okay, I think I covered everything in the beginning. I'm ready to jump into this teaching now. Before I do so, let me just get some stuff out here in the front. I love the supernatural aspect of God. I actually love the supernatural realm more than I do the earthly realm. Uh, I hope you guys do too. I don't like to be carnal. I like to be spiritual. I'm a spiritual person in Christ. Uh, the moment I was born again, I, I was seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I hope you were too. That means I'm no longer of this world. I'm just in it. I'm passing through. I'm on like this pilgrimage. Do you see what I'm saying? If somebody knows what I'm saying, can you put amen in the chat? Just let me know that you're a spiritual person too. How many spiritual people do we have on here? I want to see. I'm going to give you a sec. Okay, we got quite a few spiritual people here. All right, then you're, then you're in good company. That means that you're going to be able to take this teaching and it's going to be good for you. Okay. So, no carnality allowed here, only spirituality, Christian spirituality, that is. Now, we see right now, amongst the body of Christ. Now, hope you guys are okay. I'm going to be hanging out with you. I'm, gonna be, I'm just hanging out. I'm going to talk. I'm going to teach. I'm not going to get too rowdy here because I want, I want to make sure that I, um, what, we, what, we, what do you call it? I want to make sure that my words are cor correct, okay? So, I got to... I got to be able to slow roll here. All right. I can, I can, you know, you guys know I preach loud. I can get ex exuberant and everything, but I want to really teach today so that you guys can, can catch it. I want you to catch this. Okay. I want you to, to eat the manna that's coming from heaven and I want you to see into the spirit realm. So let me encourage somebody here today. This teaching is to get you to see into the spirit. If, if you, if you 
have faith, the, only the faith of a mustard seed, like Jesus says, then you should be able to see into the spirit realm. If you have an imagination, you have the ability to see into the spirit realm. Does somebody hear that? Let me help you. If you have an imagination, you can see into the spirit realm. What did Jesus say? He said, the way that you inherit the kingdom of God is to what? Become like a child. Children. Children. Become like a child. What is so unique about a child? Do you remember when you were a child how big your imagination was? Do you remember how you could see something that wasn't there, but it was there? Now, I'm not talking about familiar spirit stuff, but you had an imagination. That is one of the beautiful things about children is, and you had this high sense. As a child, you can sense the happiness of the family. You can sense the anger of a family. You can sense uh, when something's not going right. You don't have all the carnality. That's why children are so open to receive and they can be you know, move different ways and things like that because they're childlike. They have childlike faith. You know, so even babies, you know, babies really have their eyes open to the spirit realm. You ever see babies, they'll look at something and nothing's there. And if they look and they see something bad, they'll cry. And you're like, why are you crying? What are you looking at? Some of you parents know exactly what I'm saying. And then there's times where the baby will just be giggling, looking at something. And that you're just like, what are they looking at? They're looking at angels or they're looking at something in the other realm, right? But babies are very sensitive to the spirit realm. So we can learn a lot from babies. Babies are pure. Babies have not been uh, violated and, and corrupted. So they're still very pure and they can see in depth. It's funny that you ever think about it. Some of us may, but how much of your babyhood right? It's from the time you're born up to a certain time. Do you really remember much? I, I don't, I don't remember much from being a baby. Now, some of you do, some of you have some of that supernatural memory stuff that remembers, but it's like something happens where we don't have that, uh, quite that memory. You don't remember being in your mother's womb. Now, once again, some of you do, it's, I've met people that actually can remember even being back into almost into the womb. It's, it's really crazy stuff. I've seen people that, that have been able to do that, which is wild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But babies are able to do that. So we have to have childlike faith. So some of you have had a lot go on in your life. Now, this is going to lead up to what I'm talking about, but I want to co cover ground, okay? Some of you had stuff happen to you in your life or in your childhood that took that purity, that took that um, that 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 ability to be able to uh, really enjoy the supernatural realm. Fear came in, traumas came in, um, abuse, you know, that is trauma, words being spoken over you that are death, things that just pollute your soul. Some of us get into addictions, we get into immorality, anything that will pollute us and pollute our temple. Um, we watch movies we shouldn't watch. We listen to music that we shouldn't listen to. Believe it or not, all of that has polluted your temple, and it keeps you, this is going to help somebody to be able to see in the Spirit, it keeps you from being able to engage in the Spirit realm. <coughs> to engage in the Spirit realm. Excuse me, guys. Engage in the Spirit realm because you have pollution in your body. So what you have to do now is you have to lose the pollution. And that's why we fast, right? Because it purifies us. It cleanses us. This is why we pray. It puts us back where we need to be focused, back on God. It makes us shut off the things of the world, taking things into our eyes that we shouldn't, taking things into our ears, uh, looking at books or you know, playing too many video games or whatever it means, just inserting all these things inside of our, our temple that shouldn't be there. Now, what you look at, what you listen to, what you feed your soul, your spirit, is how you're going to perceive reality. Did somebody hear that? What you take in is what's going to what you take in is going to be the perception. All right. And I'm going to go into teaching here. I haven't even gotten to the teaching part yet. But what you take in is how you will perceive reality. If, you, how, if you're watching a lot of horror movies, if you're listening to a lot of like really bad music, your reality is going to become what you put inside. So, you know, if you're, 
if you're watching horror movies, you're going to be probably scared of dying all the time and all these things. You're going to have nightmares, bad dreams because you're taking all this stuff in. And now now that's becoming your reality. But watch this. What if you're reading the Bible and you're focusing on angels? Now I'm going to get us into the teachings now. What if you take a week and just focus on every scripture that has to do with angels and you take that in from the word? What do you think is going to end up happening to you? You're going to end up having angelic encounters. Some of you are like, what? Yes. <clears throat> do you know why? Do you know why people see demons more than they see angels? You want me to tell you why? Because they study demons more than they do angels. They study demons. They, there's more people that can name the names of demons than they can the names of angels. Isn't that a problem? We can name all the names of demons. We can name Leviathan, Jezebel, Asmodeus, Abaddon. Uh, you know, I know, I know a bunch of the names. You know, Shiva, uh, Vishnu, uh, all the, it's the, so many, so many of them. But how many angels can you name? Now, here's the problem now. The angels that we know of is Gabriel and Michael. But do you think the only angels out there is Gabriel and Michael? No. You think all the angels' name is Gabriel and Michael? No. Do you know there's angels around you that have names? How many of you actually... Now, now some of you, I promise you by the God that I serve, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, some people are scared of the angelic realm because New Age has taken it and made ownership of it. They anything with an angel that we get scared and we and this is what's messed up with us in deliverance ministry. This is why we get in deliverance and we never go into the prophetic appropriately. And it's because what has happened is new age has taken ownership. Things of the devil has taken ownership of God. Do you, of God's stuff, right? So why does the new age realm get to own angels? Now there are angels deceiving angels. There is the falling angels, angels that masquerade uh, portraying themselves to be angels of light, but you can test these angels. Anytime you guys have a spiritual encounter, you have the tools to, to see what type of angel it is. What ask the angel, who do you come in? What name, what name do you come in? I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, <laughs> you know, and here's something too. When you encounter an angel, a great fear, I mean, an angel from the Lord, can somebody understand when you encounter them physically? Okay. There's a great fear associated with them. But what they will always do is say, hey, it's okay. Peace be with you. I come with a good message. All right. These masquerading angels of light, they come in like they're your homie or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to have discernment and you got to be able to check them. Okay. This is helping somebody. If it's helping somebody, let me know now. You got to be able to check them. All right. So there is the angels of deception that are out there. The Even Satan masquerades as an angel of light, right? But there is many angels, and I'm about to go into the teaching, and we're going to break this down so you guys can understand how the angelic realm looks. Now listen, I have, I've had my, my fair share, not a lot, but my fair share of, of encounters with the angelic realm. Some I didn't even realize to recently, excuse me, till recently hanging around prophetic people that helped me to understand some things. Okay. I'm prophetic, but there's some people out there that are really, really deep into that. And I've had to hang around these people to have some refining and understanding and learn and grow. Do you know that you need to hang around the fivefold ministry to learn and grow? Did anybody know that? Do you know that iron sharpens iron? You're, if you think you've arrived and you got the greatest, deepest revelation, you've missed it. There's always somebody that's ahead of you. So what I've been doing is I've been going, if I see that I need some refinement in an area, or I need to grow in an area. I will go around that fivefold gifting to gifting to get sharpened and to grow appropriately because I don't want to be known as Deliverance Dan, if you know what I'm saying. Who want, you want to be known for way more. You there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You understand? We want to be able to operate and move in any of them at all times. Okay. So what I do is I'll go find people and I'll be like, hey, teach me, show me, because as I'm te taught and as I'm growing, now I know what's going on with me. Some of you are having encounters with angels a lot and you don't even realize it. Sometimes you're in public and angels are around you and you don't even realize it. But if you had eyes to see, you'd catch them. <clears throat> you'd catch them. Let me give you an example. 
of not an angelic encounter, okay, of a demonic encounter. I'm walking in the Mall of Millennium in Orlando. Some of you guys know where this is. Yesterday, I'm walking. A man comes out of nowhere and comes and stares. He's a little taller than me. My wife got worried. She grabbed both of my kids' hands. She thought that this man came and gave me this. I don't know this man from Adam. Never met him in my life. He walks up to me, and I could feel his presence. His presence was nasty. It was. I didn't even see him, but I felt his presence. And it was a tall man, and you could feel it. it was a, he, he was unclean, but he was trying to intimidate me in the mall. This guy doesn't know me. Okay, he does round one. He walks away. I'm in another part of the mall, mall. The guy finds me again, and the same encounter happens. I feel that same demonic presence. What it is is Satan. I'm on his. I'm 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 tearing that kingdom up. So he's trying to intimidate me. He's trying to send his demonic. And do you know demons can the same way those angels? You know how angels can come into the physical realm. These demonic angels can do the same thing too and come to intimidate. I, I believe with all my heart I had a demonic uh, angel or whatever that thing was. One of those fallen angels. I don't even know what he was. He wasn't. That wasn't a human feeling I felt that came and tried to t intimidate me. And I knew it was something because it was almost like. I, I didn't I didn't want to talk. It's weird because me, you know, me, ex cage fighter, I, I I'll be like, yo, what's up, dude? Why are you all over me? But no, it was like, it was like, what is this? I, I kind of got like, what is this? You know? So I, I fully believe that I had one of those encounters yesterday. Weird. I mean, just out of this, out of the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like very nasty feeling. I Remember, guys, I, I'm, I don't have the best smeller in the world, but they do smell like sulfur. But my wife confirmed with me. She said, Daniel, that guy, something was wrong with him. He did not like you. And I said, yeah, I felt his presence before I saw him. I was like, this is weird. So I'm just telling you guys, the supernatural realm is real and they can manifest. Angels and the demonic realm can manifest in the physical and human form. A lot of people don't know that. They can manifest in human form. Angels can take the form of a man. Uh, fallen angels can take the form of a man. Satan takes the form of a man. We don't realize this. They are all over the place. You are having encounters all the time. Do you understand? You are there is a, there, every day you go out. Ask the Lord. Lord, give me eyes to see so that I don't miss nothing in the supernatural realm. Let me be able to see what is going on around me. If angels are around me, let me see an angel. If there's something demonic around that's trying to uh, intimidate me or trying to do something, let me be able to see it and notice it, Lord, because I want to be aware of how things operate and how things move. And I believe today that even as you guys have tuned into this teaching and you're investing your time, your spiritual eyes are going to open up in a greater way today. All right. But I'm telling you, there is more for you. Come on, somebody. There is way more for you then is against you. Remember when Elisha's eyes were open, the servant, right? Elijah opened the eyes. What did he see? He saw massive armies of angels. There's way more angels out there, guys. Okay? So it's, there's more for you than it's against you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. If God is for you, who will be against you? Now, just to let you know, I saw some people in the chat put names like Raphael and all these names. And yes, these are names of angels and stuff like that that come from the book of Enoch. But remember, the book of Enoch is apop apocrypha. It is not canon. Okay? So some people will try to say that the, the apocrypha, the book of Enoch, is in the Bible and da da da. No, we have 66 books that are canon of Scripture. Uh, the book of Enoch is apocrypha. So if you read it, read it with a grain of salt. There are some accuracies in there, but there's also some stuff that may be a little bit off. So it's apocrypha, all right? And then you got some books that are, you shouldn't even read. They're not even close to anything. They're very Gnostic and things like that. But we have 66 books that keep us uh, in a good place, all right? But there's not, you can read the book of Enoch, but make sure you, you know the actual Bible before you actually read the book of Enoch. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, I'm about to jump into the teaching now. Um, give me just a second, and I'm going to get this straight. All right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to jump into this. I told you, I'm just hanging out with you guys today. This is teaching time. <laughs> okay. How to see angels. Are you ready? Let's rock. So the first thing you need before you can actually see angels 
it takes this thing called faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.1 says, um, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? So this means that you have to have a hope of seeing angels. You have to, that will produce faith. Okay? So there has to be a hope to see angels. I, Lord, I want to see angels. Lord, I thank you for opening my eyes to the angelic realm. Lord, I, I have a hope. To, I'm going to see one. You go, you go to, you have an expectancy, okay, to see angels. There's expectancy there. So you need faith to be able to access God's kingdom realm, to be able to ex- access the spirit realm that Christ resides in, okay, the, or the angels reside in. You need faith. It's the only way. Faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right. And your faith will increase over time. Faith grows. If you look at a mustard seed, what does it do? It grows and it gets all over the place. It causes it's like a weed. You know, weeds get all over the place. You know how fear gets all over the place? Well, faith gets all over the place too. Okay. So you need faith to access the spirit realm. All right. You need faith to access the spirit realm. Same way with deliverance when we're casting out demons. You need faith to do that. You need faith to heal the sick. You need faith to raise the dead. You need faith to believe for salvation. You need faith to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need faith. Amen? Okay. And this, uh, So here's the next part. You need to ask the Lord for angelic encounters. Now, some people are scared. I'll admit when I started asking the Lord to let me experience the angelic, I was scared. I'll tell you straight up. I was like, if I see an angel right now after the way they've been described in the Bible, I don't know if I'm going to be alive. Because every, <laughs> excuse me, guys, everybody fell as dead when they saw the angel. So I'm like, man, if this thing pops up, boy, I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to be done. That's what I was like, man. You know, and I had a time, I'm going to share testimony as I teach, okay, because my testimony is my testimony. There was a time years ago, it was about 2015, I remember I went downstairs and I was like, Lord, I want an angel encounter. When I tell you this intense fear started to come over me, like a righteous fear, I ran. (laughs) I'm not even joking. I ran because I knew I was about to see something that was going to rock me, man. I was like, what I'm about to see, I ain't talking about a demon. I'm talking about there was something that that was going to that was going to show up that was going to rock me. Do you see? And I was like, come on now. And and I ran. So it 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 didn't you know, it 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 didn't happen in that moment because I ran, all right? And I was new to this. I was really new to this. Yeah, the fear of the Lord. That's right. I was I was out of there. So you have to ask the Lord. And then you got to be prepared because it'll come when you're least expecting it. You know, we think we're going to ask and it's going to happen in that moment. And it can. But these encounters will happen when you least expect it. They'll show up and then they'll be like, well, didn't you didn't you ask me to show up? You know, weren't you praying to God to send an angel? Well, here I am. You know what I'm saying? But when they come, they come. They're, they're messengers. Do you understand? They're messengers. So they're not just going to come for no reason. They're going to come with a message from the Lord. So just know that they don't just come to hang out and just be there. They have a purpose. The angels have assignments. You see, they have assignments. They have things to do. They're about the Father's business for real. They're about God's business. Uh, they they don't play around. They are very. They reverence God. They fear God. They're coming from the presence of the Lord. So just know that they come with fear for a reason. It's because they fear the Lord. All right. They come with that fear because they fear the Lord and they have a job to do. They're about their business. All right. They can talk now. Some people in the some people now listen, guys. I'm gonna tell you now. You're gonna look in the chat now. Some people don't like these teachings. They don't like talking about angels. But if you want to go deeper into the deeper things of God, you got to learn this stuff. All right. I'm ignore. I'm gonna be ignoring the chat over here. So if you see the haters, guys, ignore them, love on them, pray for them. But you're not gonna go into the depths that you want to go into unless we talk about this kind of stuff. All right. I'm willing to uh, to, to to lose some people. To gain to to gain some traction, if you see what I'm saying, I'm not going to be hindered by anybody when it comes to what God wants me to talk about. 
All right. I don't want basic Christians. We need supernatural Christians who know how to operate in every aspect and fa facet of God. Okay. So you have to ask the Lord for angelic encounters. Now, some people don't. Sometimes angels just show up. Sometimes there's sometimes that God really wants to get somebody's attention. He'll talk to him. We see that with the uh, prophet Samuel. Right. He'll he'll call on him. He'll talk to him. He'll send an angel to talk to him. He'll send Gabriel. He'll send uh, any any angel to go and get his bid and done so that the purposes of God can can manifest and, and go forward in the way that he wants them to go. Angels are there to help the purposes of God be fulfilled. Right. And they, they're here for us. Guys, angels are here for us. And we need to understand that angels are here for us. Angels are a part of almost everything that's happening supernatural. I hope you know that. Angels are participating in all the supernatural aspects of God. Angels are always participating in all the supernatural aspects of God in some way or another. Okay? Like people had problem with me with this angel. I asked, and I asked the Lord to send an angel to knock this demon out. Like people got mad about that, but angels are there to assist Angels helped. God got the glory. The girl got set free because an angel that came from the presence of God come and ripped that demon off of her and she was set free for the glory of Jesus Christ. Who cares how it happened? Is the person free and is, are they serving Jesus and is their life progressing forward with Jesus Christ? Amen. That's what it is. If we aren't, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not glorifying angels over the power of God. We're not uh, worshiping angels, but they are there to assist. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 7, 7 to 11. Matthew 7, 7 to 11 says this, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how much to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven good give, give good things to those who ask Him? Now, if you're asking for angels to assist you, if you're asking for angels, and by the way, guys, I know this is a hot topic. We're over 1,200 viewers right now. This is a hot topic. You guys continue to share, continue to like. This is a good teaching. I'm telling you, it's so good. All right. If... If you ask the Lord, being his child, to do something, to give you something, he's going to do it, obviously, in the time when a father thinks that it should be given, okay? He's going to do it when a father believes the child's supposed to have, have it. But at the same, same time, you can ask the Lord for an angelic encounter. Ask him, and, and he will send his angel with a message, all right? Now, the angels, they appear in many different ways. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this. This is what I'm going to get into next. There's different ways you can see angels, all right? Believe it or not, it ain't just them showing up in person, okay? You can see them in different ways. And I'm going to give examples of how I am able to see them. You guys see me. I don't know if you guys watch me sometimes. I'll look at a person. I'll be like right there over your shoulder. I see an angel. You ever seen me do that? Or I'll ask the angel to do something. I can see them. But when I'm seeing them, I'm seeing them. Uh, it's a vision, but it's an internal vision. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. It, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it within, without. It's like it's within, but it's without. I don't really know how to quite explain it. Now, an open vision means it's like it's really there in front of you. An internal vision means that you're seeing something that's there, but you aren't, you aren't seeing it quite like this. Like when I prophesy to people sometimes, I'll see come over their head the word they need freedom from. I'll see their name come over, right? They're over their head. I'll see something on their body. I'll see what's behind them. I'm seeing it in the, in the realm of the Spirit. That's why you hear people say, I see this in the realm of the Spirit. And actually, by the grace of God, this is a very strong gift that I've had being able to internally see things. Uh, it's one of the best ways that I'm able to move and operate. Some people say it's like using the imagination, but actually it's, it's deeper than the imagination. It goes further than your imagination. It's like your imagination is the access point, but then there's deeper than that. You see what I'm saying? Um, so God, it's like God opens your eyes, 
uh, opens your eyes to it. Some people will say, somebody put it in the chat now, it's just like the, no so you have the knowers, okay, where you know there's an angel, all right? You have people that say, oh, I just know there's an angel. They don't see anything. They don't see an internal no vision or anything, but they're like, I just know. And then you'll have the person that has that internal seeing ability, ability. They'll be like, oh, I see the angel. It's right there. And then what happens is what they are knowing and what they are seeing, what will happen is the manifestation of what they've seen starts to really show up, if you know what I'm saying. And then you'll sometimes see when angels come on the scene, deliverance will take place. Healings will start breaking out when they in an area of where that angel is at. Now, remember, angels are on aren't omnipresent like the Holy Spirit. So let's not get it twisted. The Holy Spirit heals. The Holy Spirit delivers. Okay, but angels can bring healing from the presence of the Lord. Angels can bring deliverance from the presence of the Lord that is obviously generated by the dunamis of God, by the power of God. Okay, so don't get it twisted now. We're not going to glorify angels over what the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit is way, way better than any angel, but the angels are good to assist in the work of the Lord. <clears throat> and it keeps us humble. Some people don't even realize this. It keeps us humble to know that we need the assistance of angels, right? Isn't that humbling to know that the angels are there to assist us and to help us? I mean, that's humbling for me. It'll also keep me from becoming a God unto myself because it's like saying I need some help. I need you to help me. I'm struggling in this area. Lord, can you send an angel to help me deliver this demon? Lord, can you send me an angel uh, to, to speak to me on behalf, to tell me some information, bring a word of knowledge from heaven? Can you do this and can you do it? There's so many avenues of this, guys. There's the angel of the Lord. You ever see prophets say this? They'll say, the angel of the Lord told me. They really mean that too. They really know the difference in an angel of the Lord talking, in the Holy Spirit talking, and in their word of knowledge or word of knowledge sent from the Holy Spirit. So you, there is so many dimensions and dynamics of what is, what is going on in the spirit realm. That's why we have to grow. We have to grow and we have to know what we're operating with and working with. William Branham had an angel that would speak to him about people in the crowd. Did y'all know that? There was an angel that was with William Branham that would speak to him and give him information about the people in the crowd. Now, here's what some people will scream. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm still all almost over all this coughing. What would happen, though, is people go, familiar spirit. That's not true. And that's another thing. Listen, this is a nice, healthy rebuke. Stop calling everything a familiar spirit because you'll never have an angelic encounter you'll you'll never be able to have angels uh assist you if you're scared of a familiar spirit all the time you see what i'm saying there are familiar spirits there are divining spirits meaning spirits of divination there are but remember those spirits are for self-gain. Those spirits exalt man instead of exalt God. If it's an angel speaking to the prophet or to the man or woman of God, it's going to exalt Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will never. Oh, this is good. Guys, let me tell you something. An angel will never exalt man. He will always exalt God. That's how we have these religions that were formed, like with Joseph Smith or that guy that was in the JW or, or some of these other people that had angels come and give them information. Oh, Muhammad, these people that came and got this information. And it, th these angels were demons masquerading as angels of light that lifted a man and lifted another religion. These are the angels that you don't want us. These are the familiar spirit. These are the spirits you got to look out for. But an angel will always make sure it gives glory back to God. It gives glory to Jesus Christ. It'll never make man greater than what man is, is. Okay, man, we are even now we are a little lower than the angels right now. Do you understand? But we have salvation. They don't get that. And then at the end of it all, we will judge the angels. I mean, think about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are things that we really need to, uh, to to think about. Eventually, we will even judge the angels. This is some deep stuff, guys. If you really go into the Bible and you do teachings, this stuff is, is elementary, really. It's not really, really super, super deep. It's stuff if you just read your Bible, you'll understand. And you won't be weirded out and, 
You won't be going, oh, I can't do this with that. Oh, they're over there messing with angels. Oh, my goodness. No, man. No, this stuff is real and it's right in your Bible. I, I, it, it's still more, guys. I still have more to go. Isn't this crazy? Watch this. Psalms 119, 1 to 30. This is important verses when it comes to seeing angels, okay? Psalms 119, 1 to 30. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I'll say that again. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. You see that? That's amazing. Come on. I'll say it again. The, the entrance of your words gives light. What word? God's words entering into us gives us light. Hallelujah. It gives understanding to the simple to the simple. So if you will take God's word and you will input it into you, it will bring light into your body. If you need breakthrough, excuse me, if you need breakthrough in poverty, you're going to go look at Bible verses that have to do with prosperity. Am I right? If you need healing in your body, you're going to go read Bible verses that bring healing light into you. The word is a light unto our feet, right? Come on now. I'm, I'm, are y'all with me? If I don't know if you're with me now, guys. If you're still with me, can you put a one in the chat? Come on now. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on now. He is a, he's a lamp. It, it is so many Bible verses that, are consider, that, that bring about the word light. So how do we bring light into us? We read the light of the world. We read the Bible that brings light into our being. Okay, if you need healing, get the healing scriptures and healing will come into you. I promise you guys, if you need healing in your body, look at healing scriptures, study them, pray them, receive them. If you want to see angels, look at the angel scriptures, look at the encounters in the Bible and just in, in just get them and just eat it, eat it deep. You understand anything you need. If you need to break poverty, read about prosperity. It's okay in the beginning, to go to a man of God or woman of God to get what you need. But eventually the Lord says, go take what's yours. Go receive what's yours. Grab it. It's right there in the word. Are you going to stand? Are you going to believe? You understand? Grab it. Grab it and don't move and watch it break forth speedily. Watch your healing break forth speedily. You, you see? Get it. Go grab it. It's yours. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than two, any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12, uh, dividing soul and spirit like bone and marrow. Come on, somebody. Discerning even the most innermost thoughts of man. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Y'all got me. Now I'm, now I'm going into some preaching. Let me go back to teaching before I, get, before I let loose on here. See, the word's in me, guys. That's why I'm able to operate the way that I operate, because the word is alive. It's alive in me. The light of the world is in me. I shine the light of Christ. That's why people come on here to hear from me and learn from me, because you see a light. You see something attractive, something you need in your life that's going to take you from glory to glory and faith to faith. And that's not going to keep you in boring waters. Okay, we don't have any bored Christians on here. I shouldn't have one bored Christian on here. I should have Christians that say, you know what? I'm going to listen to this today and angelic encounters are going to be the norm for me. Ones that come from the Lord. The supernatural realm is going to be normal for me. Come on, somebody. Now, look, I'm going to use another verse so you'll understand. All, all this is backed up by Bible. Okay, Matthew 6, 22 to 23. Matthew 6. 22 to 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. Did somebody hear that? This is powerful right here if you really catch it. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. This is Bible. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Matthew 6, 22 to 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. What goes in here is huge. Okay? 
what you're receiving from this life is huge. If you're watching the P word all the time, you got to be careful. YouTube's gotten a little weird with this. The P star, star, star. What do you think you're going to have come into your life? Everything that is dark. If you're watching fighting, if you're watching a lot of cursing, if you're watching all this, what do you think is going to manifest from you? Because you're taking it into your eye. Okay. The world's job is to <clears throat> pollute you. God's job is to uh, salute you. And you see what I'm saying? <laughs> God's job is to, is to fill you with his light, is to fill you with his goodness. If your eye is full of light, this is why when men and women of God who, who have spent time with the word, spent time with the Lord, when they walk on the scene, it isn't that there's something special about them. It's they've spent time with the light of the world. They spent time with the word. It has come into them. So now when they come on the scene, that light comes with them. Do you see they have healing in them because they took the healing scriptures. They have prophetic ability because they, they ate the prophetic. They have prosperity on their life because they ate the prosperity stuff in the Bible. They have all these things. They have miraculous things happening because they ate it more than they ate the things of this world, okay? And that's why we fast, so that when we fast, we're able to focus. Fasting equals focus. Somebody needed to hear that. Fasting equals focus. Fasting focuses you. Like us as the supernatural life, we are on a fast this week. We're focusing on the things of God. Fasting equals focus. You guys see this teaching I'm able to release. It's because I'm fasting and I've gotten focused. I don't fast to tell anybody about it and get all y'all's praise and all this stuff. I do it because I need time with my Jesus. I need Jesus Christ of Nazareth to teach me because I want to grow. Okay, there's a little nugget for you guys. The reason I talk about the light or the lamp or your eye being single, your eye being this, your eye being that is because if you want to see angels, you have to spend time learning about the supernatural realm. You have to read about angels. You have to you have to listen to sermons on angels from the right people. Don't listen to the weird. There's some weird people out there. Have discernment, okay? The right people. You don't want to get in. The, there's stuff out there, guys, that is talking. You'll hear about angel cards and angel numbers and, the, and the co this consciousness. and all. Don't get caught in that stuff as you go and you search this. I'm giving a warning as I teach, too. Do you understand? I'm giving healthy balance here, guys. Don't get into the weird places. Make sure you have discernment. If you feel something's off, don't listen to it, okay? But there, there is the good stuff. So make sure that people who give God glory and stuff, you can listen to them. But stay away from that stuff that makes man all powerful instead of God in man powerful. Hallelujah. Okay. So you want more light? You want to see angels? You want that internal vision to turn on? You want that seer anointing to turn on? You want your knower to turn on? You want that discernment to increase? Fill yourself with the word. I challenge you all today to go and find places in the Bible where men and women of God had encounters with angels and just study them. Study why. They, most of them, they were in prayer and an angel came. They were grieving over something and an angel came. They have a divine assignment and destiny from God, and an angel came to tell them and approve of their assignment. Most prophets, most apostles have angelic encounters. Where, where it comes from, it doesn't matter, or they have the Lord himself come and affirm what they are doing. I had a dream with the Lord. I've had dreams where angels come and appear as men of God and stuff like that. That's right. So, the, Or the Lord himself. So, so you ever have dreams where men and women of God appear in your dreams? That's not them appearing. That's, that's an angel that's taking their place. Or that's, the, that's a, the Lord that's visiting you in their place. So the in, dream, the, in the dream realm, the Lord. And get this. You're not really dreaming when that's going on. Did somebody catch that? That's, that's, that's kind of like that in-between place because you're actually seen in the spirit. I, that might be too deep for somebody. I might need to back up because that might take you too, too far. And I don't, wanna, I don't know how far y'all want to go today. But... You know, that's, you're actually in another realm. You're not, you're not quite in that dream. You're like, you're still there. It's just, you're alive in the spirit. So you're interacting in the spirit realm. It's pretty basic, but that's pretty much what's going on when you're having those type uh, of encounters. Okay. We call them dream, but that's not a dream. That's, that's actually, you're in the midst of a vision. 
All right. Some things that are visions, uh, we call them dreams. Somebody said a vision upon waking. You're kind of, that's about right. Uh, a vision is taking place instead of a dream, but we call them dreams. So guys, we got to learn how to discern between what's a dream and we got to discern between what's a vision. Okay. A, a lot of us are having more visions than we know. Okay. So when you're encountering angels, you're more in a vision. When you're encountering the dark figures in your room, you're in more of a vision. When you're having those demons come and do their succubus incubus stuff you're more of in a vision than you are in a dream that stuff's actually happening that's why when you wake up you feel what has happened all right dreams are a little bit different but dreams in their set in, in their own sense are kind of kind of a vision too you get what i'm saying but there's a lot more happening spiritually than you than you would even imagine all right man y'all got me i'm a, i must be holy ghosty toasty over here you got me sweating today all right Okay, so angels, guys, actually in the Bible, just so just to to affirm everything that I've been saying, so people don't think Daniel is just talking to talk. Okay, so you'll know that seeing angels uh, is like normal. Okay, there's places in the Bible. Now, I, there is no way I will be on here a long, long time if I sit here and teach you guys every single place in the Word where angels came and visited people. You know why? There's a lot. There is a lot of an angelic encounters that happened in the Bible <clears throat> through visions or through actual uh, manifestations, okay? But just to give you some places, if you look in Luke 1, to 33, you see the angel Gabriel is coming to tell Mary that she is going to give, give birth to the Messiah of the world, to Jesus Christ. And that is in Luke 1, to 33. I'll read some of that. And it's deeper than 33. It goes 34, 35. It goes on down. But you can, you can look of it. Okay. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, the messenger of the Lord, right, was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel, listen, having come in, the angel entered in. He came in. The angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Remember I said angels bring a message. What did he do? He brought a message. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Now I'd be interested to see how angel Gabriel appeared to her right here. I'd be wondering if he came in the form of a man, if he was in his, <clears throat> in his angelic state, I would be very cu curious to, to know because she's, she's pretty much got all her faculties going on and consider what manner of the greeting it was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Can somebody say, say, I have found favor with God? I hope you found favor with God. Come on, somebody. All right. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The angel brought forth Jesus's divine purpose and destiny and told it to his mother. Okay. The angel gave a prophetic word about Jesus's destiny, told her what's up. Hallelujah. Now watch this. This is good right here too. This is something you may not know. Um, this, this is now, this is the, this is the red letter stuff I'm reading. That was the gospel, right? Now let's go into book of acts. All right. And, it, and there's other places in, in, in the gospels and in the, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, you got Zechariah, you got Revelation, you got Ezekiel, you got Isaiah. Oh my goodness, you got, you got so many books of the Bible where angels appear. Genesis with Abraham and them angels come in, the angels in Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, angels are all over the Bible, big time, okay? Wrestled with an angel. You see Jacob uh, wrestling with the angel. Um, but anyway, there's, there's a lot of places with the angels, all right? You guys read the Bible. You can read all about the angels all day, every day. All right. Um, there's a place in the book of Acts, Acts 12, 13 to 15, where they thought they saw Peter's angel. They thought they saw Peter's angel. Y'all remember that? Watch this. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. 
When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself, meaning you're crazy, right? Yep. She kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Now catch that. Why th- does that tell you something? That means an angelic, angelic encounters were very commonplace in that day. They were like, oh, that's not Peter. That's just his angel. That means they saw people's angels probably more than we know that they were like, oh, don't even answer. That's just his angel. Think about that. <clears throat> what if you're doing something and you just go, oh, there's an angel just chilling. What's up? <laughs> you, get, you get what I'm saying? Like, what? that's that's what the, it's just his angel. So this, there's an angel that was assigned to Peter that looked like Peter, right? A lot of people don't look over this stuff. They look past this. Ain't, you ain't going to learn this in your typical denominational church, okay? You're just not. They, they, haven't, they don't want to go this deep because they're scared they're going to scare the families off, all right? But this is true. So, you know, back, back in that day, angels would manifest like nothing. Do you know where the most persecuted churches are? The most persecuted churches— it is in Pakistan and, and all these places, right? Uh, over in Afghanistan. Do you know angels are, it's very common to them. If you really go over there and talk to them, them seeing angels is very common because we're grace, we're sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. Where there's persecution, there's greater manifestation of the supernatural realm. It just is. It just is. You go talk to these people, they're like, oh, that's just an angel. I promise. I've talked to people and they seem so like, what's so special about that? That sometimes I'll go talk to people. They'll be like, you Americans, y'all are just so fast. Y'all don't even get deep enough. I'm telling you, I've gone overseas these places. Like, you just, y'all just are not deep. I'm like, I'm not deep. I am deep. You know, I think I'm doing something out here. But they they seen the supernatural realm is very common. They are not intimidated by angels. They're not intimidated. I mean, they are intimidated by angels when they show up from the Lord. But you get what I'm saying? Demons, they're kind of like, ah, oh, it's just another demon. You know, where you have to face true persecution and stuff. Like the supernatural realm is whatever. But now when you have a supernatural Christian showing up in, in America doing some crazy wild stuff, first thing they do is they hire, they holler. They're part of the new age. You got a familiar spirit. They got the Kundalini. They got this. They got that Kundalini, by the way. They got all these things. And never have they ever went and had a conversation with them or talked to them. Just because a man or woman of God says that they have an angel with them or they have encountered angels doesn't mean that they're part of a bad cult or they're part of a bad movement. Meet the person, talk to the person before you judge the person. You understand? Because right here in the New Testament, angel encounters were very common. An angel actually came and broke Paul and Silas out of the prison. Huh? I mean... What else do we need here? In the book of Revelation, imagine if John showed up on the scene after getting the book of uh, Revelation. People would say, oh, that's demonic. That's this. And guys, everything is not demonic. Everything is not demonic. <laughs> you understand? You got, we got to, I would almost guarantee sometimes some of you are about to have an encounter, but because you're so demon focused, you miss an encounter. Did you hear that? Some of you, God has been wanting to give you a supernatural encounter, but you're so demon focused that you miss an encounter because you've been so dwelling into the superstitious, weird Christians who are who refuse to access anything but the demonic realm. Oh, my goodness. Did y'all hear that? You're You're hanging around watching all the wrong people. That are all demon conscious. They can find a Jezebel spirit. They can find Leviathan. And this is me saying this, okay? This is Daniel Adams saying this. And you guys know me for deliverance and stuff, right? But I'm here to tell you, we can find all these demons. But where is one of these men and women of God actually found an angel? Where, where are they? <laughs> you know, where, where, where have we found anything of God? Like, where, are the, where is those encounters? Tell me about where you got caught up and you saw heavenly things. People are scared to do that, though, because they don't want to get persecuted. When you start talking about those type of things, what happens is the church actually starts to persecute you. A lot of the Christians, not all the church, but a big majority of the religious sect of the church will come and persecute you and attack you. And actually, if they got the chance, they would make sure you disappear and never existed so that their doctrine could have place. Who does that sound like? That sounds like a modern-day Pharisee, 
But the problem is, is these are charismatic Christians that are casting out demons <clears throat> and healing the sick and going against their own. And the truth is, is it's birthed from jealousy because instead of them wanting to grow and go further, they don't know how to humble themselves and actually say, I need to know more. You know more than me. So when you refuse to humble yourself and go learn and go meet a person, you attack a person. Right. And that was what's wrong with the Pharisees. The Pharisees had their nice stuff on and had all this going on and their religious idolatries and all this. And Jesus comes on the scene and wrecks them with the supernatural wrecks them. It actually, actually, if, if you read in Matthew 4.10, here's another area. Matthew 4.10, watch this. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, 10 to 11. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Now this is when Jesus was 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, right? In the wilderness. Then the devil left him, and behold, watch this, watch what it says. Angels came and ministered to him. Whoa. Angels came and ministered to Jesus? Well, what if Daniel Adams or another man or woman of God come on the internet and said, last night angels came and ministered to me? Oh my goodness. You'll have so many exposed videos, it'll rock you. They'll be like, oh, he's talking to this. Look, an angel came. He didn't even test the spirit, blah, 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 blah. Did Jesus test the did did Jesus test these angels when they came to minister to him? That's another thing. We, we, we can't even discern when it's a true angel of the Lord. So we even got to test the angel of the Lord. Oh, man. <clears throat> this is how far we have gotten from actually knowing the Lord and knowing when the Lord is sending something to minister to us, sending an angel, a ministering angel to come and minister to us. What if we've shunned ministry from angels because we're so scared of the devil? We're so scared of getting a demon that we say, no, Lord, I don't want your angel. That's a demon. Like, you see what I'm saying? When that angel is actually coming to touch you and heal you from your infirmity, that angel has been sent in the night while you're sleeping to touch your body and to bring healing into your body. Do you, do you remember that? There's a place in the Bible that says the angel came and touched. It was Daniel in Daniel 10, I believe, that came and touched, or it may have been God. I don't remember quite, but it's Daniel 10. Touched him. You see, what if you are actually pushing away the angels as they come? that the Lord has sent because of your intense fear of the demonic realm. So if Jesus can have ministers, ministering angels come to and attend to him, what if you go through a long fast and you're weak and you need your strength to come back to you and the angels, have they come and they want to strengthen you and minister you and tend to you, but you're so scared they can't do it and now you're in the hospital because you did a long fast and you didn't allow that to happen. I'm just getting you to think, guys. There is so many supernatural means that the Lord wants to use so that you guys can, to, can, can be greater than what you are now. And now, for God's glory, for His glory and His story. But we cannot be elementary, basic Christians forever. We can't stay on the milk. We need to be in the meat. Okay? Amen. Oh, and, and let me see. Okay, so angels minister to us. Here's another verse to back up what I just said. Hebrews 1. 13 to 14, and then I'm going to give some testimony, and then we'll go and pray, okay? And Hebrews 1, 13 to 14. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth, sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? A way to know that you're saved is if you have angels sent your way. Did you hear that? One of the ways you can know you're saved is angels are coming to minister things to you. Oh, my goodness. Minister for those who will inherit salvation. So you can go, wow, man, at least hey, I'm definitely saved. You know, you won't, a lot of doubt goes away when God's kingdom realm is all around you. OK, it's hard to be full of doubt when God's kingdom realm is all around you. Amen. Okay, so let me talk about, <clears throat> let, me, let me help you guys get activated in this a little bit. I've given you scripture. I hope everybody's okay with the scriptures and stuff like that. Another thing, I'm going to go back in the description. I got my personal assistant. She's taking down all the scriptures and stuff, and I'm going to go back and put them in the description of the video so you guys can go back and get the scriptures and, and, and really meditate on them and, and think about them and stuff like that. And there's just so many. Guys, I mean, there, I've gotten... I've got so many scriptures. I mean, you got Jude one nine where it talks about Michael and the devil fighting over uh, Moses's body. Oh my goodness! 
And then you got Matthew 26, 53. This is a good one right here. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my father? Watch this. A lot of people overlook this one. Pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. That was Jesus saying, do you not think I can pray and get 12 legions of angels? Now, some of you will be like, you can pray and get 12 angels. Imagine how people were feeling when Jesus would say things like that. And we scared to get one angel. (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? Jesus get 12 legions and we only get one. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, I see some of you guys talking about my cough. It's almost all the way gone, guys. Just hang with me. All right. My house got hit with some wild stuff, (laughs) but we are okay. We're getting better. Okay. But always pray. Amen. Always pray and always believe for 100%. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Now, in Jesus' name. Um, oh, my goodness. Isaiah 6, 1 to 3. Guys, I'm telling you, there's just there's so many. Uh, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen talks about, And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. We've discussed that already. There's just all kinds of verses. Maybe I'll put some of them in there. And... Um, and we'll talk about it. Also, there's thrones, dominions, powers. There's there's the seraphim, the cherubim, the of What is the ophanim? I think it's the ophanim, the ones with the eyeballs. Uh, archangels. Uh, <laughs> there's so many. There's so much. Um, that you got the yeah the ho- the what does he say? The God of hosts, angelic hosts. So God is angels are huge, man. They're huge. They cry holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There's so many different angels uh, that, that are up there, the different types that do different things and stuff like that. Okay? All right, so let me go ahead and talk about, now let me go into to, to a little bit of testimony here about my life and, and how I've encountered things and stuff like that. Um, there's been times where I will be, where I've been in the bedroom and, a, and God wants to get my attention. I had one time, I had an angel show up. I thought it was a demon. An angel shook my bed and wanted me to get up and get into prayer. I've had that happen. I know it was an angel. I know it was an angel. Like, get up. I could feel, I was like, oh, you see, most people wouldn't even look at it that way. You go, oh, that's a demon. You see what I'm saying? No, 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 it's not. It was an angel wanting me to get up and get, get out there. Now, I know the difference between sleep paralysis and the angel saying, get out of bed. You see? Get out of bed. I had one time. This was crazy. This was a really supernatural encounter I had with an angel one time. Uh, I was asleep, and I was I was going to sleep. I had an angel yell. I heard this. It might have been the Lord himself. It was an angel from the Lord. Or I, the yell was so incredible and so loud. It, it went, hey, real loud. And there wasn't a person. Nobody else in the house heard it. I just heard it. And it, when I woke up, I had a sense of, I need to go pray. I need to go. I need to be with the Lord. When the, listen, let me tell you something. When the Lord wants your attention, he will get it. When he wants you to talk to him and you ain't been talking to him, he'll send an angel to get your attention. You understand? Or he will get your attention. But I had the loudest yell in my spirit. It sounded, it was, it was to me, it was physical. And I woke up and I asked everybody in the house. I said, man, did y'all hear that? I said, that was crazy. Just yelled super loud. You know, I've had moments where I'll see feathers. I've I've been in revival meetings and you'll see boop, just feather, right? There's no pillow. There's no birds. There's no way. It just pops right in front of you. That's Jesus letting you know. That's the Holy Spirit letting you know that, or the angels are letting you know we're here. We're ready to work. So sometimes they'll go, oh, that's a cool little feather. Wow. No, they're there. that's a sign and a wonder that the angelic hosts are there. They're ready to work. Now, I don't think nobody's ever told you that. That's a sign and a wonder. And sometimes angels, the feathers that are left is them telling you that they are with you. They are with you. It's encouragement that the Lord has sent angels and they are with you. A lot of people don't understand that. They don't know that. Okay. So. When you're seeing feathers, when you're seeing these things, a lot there's Christians that are that f- preach against this stuff, but it happens, okay? There's nothing wrong with seeing feathers. I've seen it happen a lot. They just pop up. You're like, what? There's no sense in a feather. Big feathers sometimes, colorful ones, little little ones, and and all this stuff. It's like, hey, we're here. 
If you see it happening in a revival meeting, that means there's a lot of angelic activity going on. If you just see it in your house and stuff, it's probably because you're worshiping. You're entering into God's kingdom realm. Things are happening. What happens when you worship and stuff? You see what I mean? So, so feathers show up. It's just, it is, it's just showing you that God is there. His angels are there. His angels are really to assist and work. Are they with you in the midst of worship? So that's just, that's why that things happen. Signs, wonders, and miracles, right? Things that make people scratch their head and go, huh? So don't be scared when, when angels, uh, feathers and, and these feathers and stuff start manifesting and happening. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And yes, it does happen in the occult. It does happen in the new age, but I'm trying to tell you something. It also happens when God is being glorified. That other stuff's counterfeit and, and boo-boo is all that nasty stuff. But it, when it happens, when God is being glorified, it's glorious and it happens at the right times. You see what I'm saying? So remember, Satan is a counterfeiter and we need to remember this. Satan is a what? Counterfeiter. He counterfeits the supernatural. That's why demonic witches and stuff can speak in tongues. They counterfeit real tongues. That's why demons can bring these false healings because they Jesus heals. That's why you have other religions that do deliverances that are not the same they don't never get they don't get the same freedom the people stay in bondage but when the lord sets you free you are free indeed okay satan is a counterfeiter astral projection versus being caught up by the spirit you see forced out of your body versus caught out of your body do you see the difference here i'm saying some things but the satan is a counterfeiter he does what god he wants to be like God, but he really, he's really bad at it. He's horrible at it actually. And that's why I'll go on and tell you guys this. That's why the devil wants to mess up our DNA because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we are born again. The way the devil does his born again is he brings in technology. He brings in uh, anything to mess up the DNA of a human. That's how he makes them their born again. Giving them the mark of the beast is how they have... That's his born agains. You see what I'm saying? So everything is a counterfeit, counterfeit, all counterfeits. So guys, we can't be scared. We can't be scared of the supernatural realm. Okay. So they were some encounters I've had. Um, I've had an angelic visitations in dreams, uh, where they appear as people sometimes in dreams, not dead relatives. Y'all, I know how y'all do. Uh, none of that. I'm not saying it because my relatives that are in Christ are in the cloud of witnesses. Now that's a whole nother teaching. I don't, I I'll do that at a later time after I prepare you guys with this, but, but angels, they, they come not, not in dreams, but in the, you know, in that in between realm we talked about, you know, um, what else? Oh, they, you, it says in Hebrews also be careful because you may be entertaining angels unaware angels appear to you in human form. I'll give you a testimony. One time back in the day, my ex dropped my keys in the elevator shaft. You know, you guys know the, the, the slot between the elevator shaft. I mean, dropped them woo, all the way down. And what happened, <coughs> excuse me, what happened is out of nowhere, a man shows up with the weirdest contraption that he had put together. And I'm sitting here like, what? I was upstairs mad. I was just mad that my keys got dropped and I won't go in nowhere. Right. My ex and a few other people said, this man just showed up on the scene. We didn't call him. We didn't ask for him. We didn't do anything like that. He comes with this weird put together contraption, sticks it down on the first boom, gets the keys, brings them up, hands them, says, God bless you. Walks out. What? You understand? <laughs> like, what do you think that was? There's a that that's an angel. That's an angel that showed up to help us out so that we wouldn't get stuck. Do you know how many testimonies you hear of people on the side of the road that angels come on and help them change their tires and stuff? I had an angel one time. I was it was raining and I was driving my car as a teenager. I had so many places and my car started to spin and an angel came and pulled my car back and put it straight on the road. To this day, I know it was an angel protecting me because I have a call and destiny on my life. I need to fulfill. I should have spinned out and went into the woods and been destroyed. There was another time there was a tanker on the side of the road. I couldn't see to the left. I pulled out. I got T-boned. My car went like this. 
They the the paramedics were freaked out. They're like, I don't know how you're alive. I know an angel was a guard between me and the door. I had no injuries, just a little scar on my head. <clears throat> so I know that angels were there protecting me. All right. I've had so many times where I should not be alive anymore in the past, but the Lord has saved my life and spared my life because of angel. He sent angels to be with me. Do you understand? Oh, man, I feel the Holy Ghost on what I'm about to say. Y'all receive this now. If you, oh, it's all over me. If you are a man or woman of God, death cannot touch you until your appointed time. Oh, my goodness. If you have a purpose on this life, why do you fear death? If you are called with a, a purpose and a destiny, it doesn't matter what comes against you, what attacks you. There is angels assigned to you that will thwart every death spear sent by the enemy. And then you will be able to do like me and testify of how many times God has spared your life. You don't think God has put something on your life that he wants to, to, to make sure that you are fulfilling your call and destiny. There are angels around you now. There are angels that are assigned to you now that are going to make sure that the enemy's plans and purposes will not succeed in your life. And when God says it's time to go, you will go. Not before that and not after that. I felt like somebody needed to hear that because somebody on here, you're scared that death may be at your door. You're scared things might be attacking you. No, you have angels assigned to you right now that will not allow death to come towards you because you have to finish what God has called you to do. There's no need. Somebody on here is watching this right now. You've been fearing that you're not going to be able to finish your race or finish the call God has put on your life. It's a lie from the pit of hell, and we send it back right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It cannot touch you. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the demons because they're scared of you. They're scared of the Christ in you. They're scared of you finishing your call and destiny and fulfilling what God has put in your life. How dare the devil think he could touch you? All those death thoughts you've been getting, that's arrows from the enemy. Go ahead and put the shield of faith up and block them because you're going to finish what God has started in your life. Can somebody say amen to that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Okay. So I went in. Um, I don't know if you guys, I'll use this. This was something recent that really happened. I went recently to see uh, my brother in Christ, Prophet Lovey. I went into his church. Uh, he may be watching this. I don't know. Uh, I went into his church, and as soon as I walked through the door, I had an, a vision, an internal vision of this angel that was over. The, I mean, this thing was beautiful. I mean, glorious. It had so many colors coming off its wings and all this stuff. And I went and I sat with the man of God uh, at, at the end of service. And I said, I, I was talking to the doorman. There was a man standing at the door. I forget his name. And I was like, man, I saw this angel when I walked in the place. I saw an internal vision. I said, what is it? And then they laughed and they went, oh, that was, um, that was the angel, blah, blah. They, they know his name and everything. And I'm like, and, and the guy's like, oh yeah, that's, that's normal. That's no, I was like, what? I was like, this is crazy, man. Because everybody was confirming. They were like, you saw that too? Oh, you saw him? Yeah. He's the angel over the church. I'm like, this is the craziest. I said, come on, somebody. That's wild. You know? So I walk into places sometimes and I can see the angel assigned to the church. Did you know, oh, somebody don't know this either. There's angels assigned to each church. And if you have eyes to see, you'll walk, when you walk into a church that is truly ordained by God, because some people are pastoring, they have no business pastoring. But anyway, that is truly ordained by God. You walk into the church and you can see their angel. And you can see, you can see the angel of the Lord that is over that church, that is protecting that church and then making sure the plans and purposes are working. And they're also assigned to the man of God there because the work has to manifest and be completed. You see what I'm saying? So I saw that internally in my knower, right? Also, I have not had, now, I haven't had a, what I would call, unless I don't know, there's some times where the angel will appear in their, their state, like their real angelic state to people. Um, I haven't had that yet, and I believe I will. Um, but I have had many different other angelic encounters. I've had so many, but I, but and but they've been in different ways, subtle ways and stuff like that. You know, where I've, where I've been, I've been with the homeless before I used to, I fed the homeless for three years and I was, uh, 
on the streets of Orange Blossom Trail, one of the worst trails on OBT. I can't tell you how many times I probably ran across angels in the form of homeless people. Go out to the homeless places, guys. I promise you. You want to have angelic encounters? Go out to the homeless places. You're going to run into an angel dressed as a homeless person. I'm telling you, it happens so many times, and you'll never see that homeless person again. It is wild. Crazy. I fed the homeless for three years, man. I saw, I saw, I saw so much stuff. There is something... Uh, that's where I was, that's where I was, uh, trained and equipped and built up was on the streets with the homeless. I preached to the homeless first. Like, I can't even tell you how many times buggy pushing angels I ran into. You see, you see what I'm saying? I know they were angels looking back. They had so much of the word. They had a peace and a love to them. And you go, you know, you go, how are they, how are they home? You ever had that feeling? You look at a person and you're like, hold on, you ain't, you ain't your normal homeless person. This is, uh, something's up right now. If you have that feeling. You're talking to an angel. Anytime you get that thing, you're like, oh, something, ain't, uh, something ain't clicking here in a good way. You know, that you're, you, and they won't admit it. The funny thing is they won't admit it. They'll just say something really parable. They'll, they'll say a parable. Every time they say a parable, it is wild. I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, can you just speak normal? Well, you know, God's blessings is upon me. They'll say something like that. And I'm just sitting here like, I'm like, I, I told one of them one time, right? I was like, I know who you, I know what you are. And he said, I'm just a man of God. That's what he told me. I'm like, tell me what you are right now. And they wouldn't tell me. It was so funny. It was really, 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 really funny. But anyway, man, I've had so many of those type of things happen. You know, I've had occasions and stuff where I just ran into people. Uh, it's, it's been a pretty incredible walk just to be able to know that look and looking back, you know, hindsight's 2020. You ever been in a situation and you look back and you go, that was an angel all day long. How many on here? I want to see how many of you in here have had moments where you met somebody and you leave and you go, that was a full blown angel. But you but you couldn't do it in the moment. You couldn't do it until you walked away. There's a reason for that because you, there's a reason that happens. It's almost like you're blinded on purpose. And then when you walk away, you know, but then you turn around and they're gone. You ever had those moments? You turn around and they're gone and you're like, oh, come on now. You're like, that person was just right there. And then you try to look for them and you can't find them nowhere, nowhere. Some of the wildest, wildest, wildest stuff. They are angelic moments and the Lord will kind of like blind you in that moment from seeing who they are just so you can appreciate who you've came across. <clears throat> and sometimes I want to tell you this too. Sometimes it's not an angel. It's actually Jesus himself appearing in the person or appearing in a personal state. Jesus can do whatever he want. Not only angels appear as men, uh, Jesus can appear through the Holy Spirit within a person. Jesus visits people. You know that, right? I mean, look, even after he had been glorified and all that stuff, he come and visit the disciples. You know, he would, vi he, he visited John in the uh, island of Patmos. That's how he saw him on uh, revelation. Paul saw him. He said, why are you persecuting me? Why are you attacking me? You know, so Jesus, he does his thing too. So, but anyway, guys have eyes to see my biggest thing right now is I want you to understand internally how to see. I want you guys to have the internal activation of how to see angels right now. I want you to become pray to become more aware of the angels that are actually around uh, ask the Lord to make you aware of the angels that are assigned to you. Ask the Lord to give you the ability to see the angels that are around and about. You see what I'm saying? And trust what you're seeing in in internally. Trust what you, I keep feel like saying it again, trust what you are seeing internally. Trust what you are seeing internally. So when you're looking at something or you're looking at somebody, don't give it, don't say, oh, this is my imagination. Say, oh, wow, I'm really seeing it. When you're in church, look around. And when you perceive, so perce perception first, and then here comes, the, here comes the reality. You have to perceive it to achieve it. Does that make sense? Wow, you have a perception that there's an angel over there in the corner. You just know it. And then you look, and next thing you know, the, <laughs> sometimes they just pop up. You know what I'm saying? The, then the angelic presence, you know, in, internally, they re, they reveal themselves and you can see their form. You can see who they are. You can see how they're dressed up and stuff like that. For an example, one of the angels that I know that are assigned to me, I, I see them see in the spirit sometimes. And that vision won't change. It's stuck there. 
<coughs> excuse me, it's stuck there. It's like this angel, he's he's got the he's got gold armor all the way on. When I'm saying gold armor, I mean this angel has gold armor all the way on him. He has this like this this draped cape thing on, on the back of him. And uh he's got this 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 it's it's almost such a warrior look, and he has two swords. And I asked the Lord, I'm like, what is this? He says, Daniel, this is the angel that is assigned to you when deliverance is happening around you. I'm like, whoa. And then the name was Eli, Eli I have, I think it's Eliu or something, it's some, something, it's something of like that nature. I, I can't quite get the, the grasp of it, but it's Eli something. I'm, I'm on that thing right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out, I'm pressing in. I want the Lord to confirm hundred percent the name of this angel, but there is that angel that's assigned to me. I know that it's assigned to me during uh, when you guys see in deliverance and stuff, of course, I'm moving with the Holy Spirit, but there's times where that, that, that angel is activated and doing and warring and doing his thing, you know, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare is happening and stuff. And that's just one. There's other angels that are assigned. The Lord will reveal this to you. I know this is tough for some people. Okay. I know it's tough and it's too, some of you guys, this is too deep. You're, some people on here, it's probably even some preachers, oh, Daniel's off the deep end. No, I'm not. I just read the Bible. This is very common. I read the Bible. This is very much, it's very purposeful. It's true. And it's right in your word. The only reason this would offend you or you would have a problem with it is because you don't read your Bible with spiritual eyes. You know the sola scriptura. You know the, you know the logos of the, of the word, but you haven't gotten any rhema off of it. When you read about the angels, take the rhema, get a rhema word. You see what I'm saying? Bring life into the word. So don't just be like, I'm going to read my Bible today. I'm not going to go any deeper. No, no, we need to go deeper. We need to know who's with us, who's around us. I always thought it was weird. I'm going to say this again. People know their demons better than they do their angels. That, I should just end the live stream right there. It's the end of it right there. More people know the de demons and can hear their demons more than they can hear an angel with them. Oh, I hear the demon talking to me all the time. Oh, Jezebel's always talking to me. Leviathan's twisting my spine. But as soon as you tell them, what, what's the name of your angel? Or who's the angel with you? What does the angel look like? Oh, I ain't never seen the angel, but I sure see that demon. Oh, that demon's a big old black looking crazy thing, vomiting out its mouth on a consistent basis, putting unclean stuff on me. That's how people would talk. But then if you tell them about an angel, no, I don't I don't know anything about them angels. That's that new age stuff. I got that's a familiar spirit. Oh, you got that's a familiar spirit. But you can't you, you know what I'm saying? But you can't you can't even tell you you can't even tell me which angel looks like. You call an angel a familiar spirit, but you you, you can tell me exactly what that Medusa head demon looks like. Yeah, that thing's got snakes, man. Do you, do you guys see what I'm talking about? Do you see how creepy and, and strange and superstitious that we can get? And, and you, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. This is the problem with the church today. When we talk about this stuff. All right. We, we talk about weirdo Christianity. No. What gets old is the same people that come to every service and they've seen a new Jezebel every other week. They got they then found the crocodile demon three ways to Sunday. You see, they got a python living in their backyard on top of their house and in their bedroom. You see, they got an incubus and succubus on every corner. They have one under their bed that visits them in the night, but you can't tell me nothing about an angelic being. You can't tell me nothing about the presence of God being in your room. You can't you can't tell me Jesus is giving you a good dream, but you sure can tell me all about your demons, you know? And listen, I understand people need freedom. I understand people need freedom. I'm not saying anything wrong with that, okay? But I want to bring some... God is maturing the deliverance ministry. Can, can I say that? God is maturing the deliverance ministry. He's taking us further. He's taking us deeper. I, we, we need to bring the prophetic realm deeper into this stuff, man. All right? We need to, we can't be so demon conscious that we never ha have an encounter with an angel, th that we never have supernatural things with God. All right. I hope I ain't hurt somebody's feelings, but in a way I do. I hope, I hope somebody's offended for the gospel's sake. I hope somebody's convicted. Wow. He's, he's talking to me. I'm finding a new demon every day. I just looked under the carpet and found the roach demon. You see what I'm saying? I looked under the carpet and. You know, all these spiders are in there. You know, if you see a roach, you think you've you got unclean spirits all over the place. You know what I'm saying? 
You can't even live normal. You got a spotter. You must have. You got the uh, the Black Widow demon. You know. You, you get what I mean? No, kill the roach and kill the spotter and move on with your life. Every time, just because you see a spotter, don't mean you got a demon. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, if you've done deliverance, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I know you do. You talk to somebody. They told you they saw a bird pecking on their window. That means that the glass of the spirit is about to fall on their head and kill them. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man, the weirdest stuff, man, craziest stuff. <laughs> yeah, raid will take them out for real, for real. Take them out all the way. <laughs> but, but at the same time, there is a demonic realm. There is a demonic reality. It just can't be greater than what God is doing in your life. It can't be greater than God's spirit realm in your life. It can't be greater than heaven's impact on your life. Hell's impact should not be greater than heaven's impact. Do you hear that? Hell's impact should not be greater than heaven's impact on your life. Jesus has saved you. Jesus has set you free. Why would we not want that more than we want the demonic realm? We should be so full of light. I'm speaking to mature Christians today. We should be so full of the light of Christ that the last thing we want to worry about is what a demon is doing because the light in us is going to be so bright that when we get close, that demon's going to fry. It's going to, we, are like, we are Holy Ghost bug zappers. Do you see what I'm saying? That means when a demon touches us, it gets electrocuted. That means when you show up on the scene, you've then read so much of the word, you've then gotten so close to your daddy, he's given you so many good gifts that when you walk in, them demons go, oh, no. What happened when Jesus walked in? What happened when Jesus walked in? They screamed, oh, this dude. They're like, oh, the son of man's here. You know, they start screaming, get out of here. Why are you in here messing with us? Yeah, they knew the light had walked in that was going to expose the darkness in their life. Angels walked in with Jesus. They saw, <clears throat> you ever seen the movies? People walk in and they got their entourage with them. When you walk in, do you have an angelic entourage with you? I ain't talking about your homies with you. I'm talking about when you walk in, do you have your real ones with you? Do you have your angelic hosts walking in the room with you? Hmm. I know when I walk in, I'm bringing my, my angels with me. Angels are coming in. They go, actually went before me. They're already preparing everything. And then they're coming behind me too. They're before me and they're behind me. We need angelic entourages. Can somebody in the chat say, I got an angelic entourage with me? That means you're walking with the angelic hosts. That means you're walking with heaven. That means anything attached to heaven is attached to you. That means when you walk in the room, by the grace of God, Heaven walks in the room, healing, deliverance, miracles, things birth forth. This is for anybody. This is available to any Christian. Angelic encounters are for everybody. Amen. I pray today that everybody, even from listening to this teaching, that your eyes will be open in the spirit and you will be able to see the angelic realm. That you'll like, like when Elijah told him, open his eyes so they can see all these angels. May your eyes be open in the spirit realm and in the open. May I, my eyes open in the open with you guys. I want to go deeper. I want to see more. I'm not satisfied. I want to see more. I want to do more for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. Amen. And plus, you're going to be hanging with the angels at the end of it all anyway. You might as well get used to the angels now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anything that is in heaven, you might as well get familiar with it now. Don't get familiar with it. Why do you want to die and have to get familiar with it? Now, there's things up there that is crazy that you, you can't get familiar with until it's really there. But, but why not get familiar with the things that we know about? Why not be aware? Oh, I forgot to tell you all this testimony today. So I was out. I have a place behind my house, a big, big open land. So I went back in my land today. And I'm talking to the Lord. And me and the Lord, we, we get to talking sometimes, if you know what I'm saying. We, we talk. Like I pray, I call him holy, righteous, ask him to sanctify me, do all these things. I thank him for life. And then I just talk to him. Does anybody talk to God on here? You just talk to God like you have a relational talk. You're not like, mm, blah, 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 blah. you know, no, you're really like, hey, you know, God, hey, I need to talk to you like a dad to a son, you know. So I'm talking to him and I'm like, Lord, the angel's out here with me today. And, I, and, and then I heard in my spirit. Now, there's no wind blowing. He said, Daniel, pay attention to the wind. That's what he told me. Man, the wind went. Whoo. I said, whoa. I said, all right. And then, and then here I am. I had to pull one of those uh, 
what was the dude that cast the fleece? Uh, uh, Gideon, right? He cast the fleece, right? So I'm like, I'm like, okay, all right. I said, Lord, just can you can you do that one? If that's really, really, the angels that are floating around in here, can it happen one more time? Man, I kid you not, man. It went woo. And I'm like, all right, I got you. <laughs> no more doubt from me. I'm done. You know, it was it was cool. But see, when you got, oh my goodness, I love it. When you got that relationship with your God, he'll do things like that. And these are things, guys, that sometimes it, go alone. Get outside in nature. I know some of y'all are in cold places right now, but get outside in nature. Go find a place where the birds are chirping. And some of y'all live in the cities like New York and stuff. Y'all have to drive a little way, a little ways. I know what that's like. But anyway, find a place in nature. Get Do a getaway. I promise you there is something to getting in nature that you have stronger angelic encounters. I'm telling you, there is something about that that place of being outside and being amongst, amongst uh, uh, the things of God's creation. Um, it's just wild. It's wild. I mean, you look in the Bible, how many times Jesus was in the, in the wilderness, angels came and you're reading the Bible and people are out there on the rooftops and stuff like that. Be out and about, be in the sun, be in nature and just pray to God. I'm telling you some wild stuff happens sometimes when you're, when you're praying in that capacity, you know, when you're praying, it's something beautiful about it. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. If you really want to have an, look, angels ain't too, ain't, they ain't too, you see this room I'm in right now. It's not that big. I'm just talking with you guys. It's not that big. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a bedroom. Angels probably do better. They're, you know, they got bodies too, right? They probably like being outside better than, better than they do in a room. You can, only, you get what I'm saying? So being outside is wonderful when you're praying and you want to have encounters and, and stuff like that. So I love it, man. I love going outside and praying and stuff. I went out there today and it was just, I had a good time. I had a good time, especially when you're fasting and stuff like that. You can turn everything off. You can just go outside and just be with the Lord be away from everything and let them talk to you. Bring you a notebook, a notepad, and just write down the things that he's saying. So it's just it's some tips for you guys. I just wanted to put out there some tips, some good tips uh, to put out there. A lot of angelic encounters happen. But uh, I think I've got it all to all for you. Um, I do want to teach a little bit more on internal seeing. So when you're internally seeing, you have to go into a place or uh, you have to be, you have to make yourself aware of the spirit if you're full of doubt and unbelief, this is going to be very hard and you probably just need to get some deliverance, uh, some healing, get in the word, build your faith, do whatever it's sorry, do whatever it takes. Um, but you got to get in a place to where your faith is strong. Right. And you're willing you can you can you can use use your internal knower. You can you can see you got to trust what you're seeing is what I'm saying. It's 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 almost hard to explain in a way because it's so spiritual. All right. It's like the other day when I was praying for that woman, I saw her dog, a dog. The dog was actually the same exact dog that she had when she was little. And the Lord said, buy this dog, uh, the same type of dog It's going to bring healing. So I saw that by the spirit. You see, it, it showed up. It's the same thing with angels. I just, I see them. There's a seer ability. You remember Jesus said, I saw you sitting under the tree. I think he said that to Andrew, right? I saw you seating. He was seeing that within him the kingdom of god is within and around it says that in luke so there's a seeing uh, ability a knowing with a seeing realm it's it's I'm, I'm how do i explain this lord help me to explain this to these people because this this is a uh, interesting um another thing is if you want to see more don't pollute yourself so do you know when you so if you go watch a movie for example, if you go watch a movie and you close your eyes, this will be good. This will help you. If you watch a movie and you close your eyes, do you know how you're still seeing that movie? You know, it's the same way. If you read the word, it's so God uses that aspect for his ways. That's why the, that we don't want to pollute ourselves because it actually keeps us from being able to see appropriately. That's why it's so important that we don't get immoral things or we don't feed our eyes with a bunch of lust and all this stuff, you see? Uh, so we, we want, oh, Nathaniel, he saw Nathaniel, right. Um, we want to make sure that we're not polluting ourselves so that God can use that aspect of us for his kingdom. Um, words and knowledge work the same way. You can see God can give, give you a, a seeing word of knowledge. Okay. And that's just, it's just how it works. 
You know, you, that's how you see in the spirit. This is the best way I can tell you guys how it works. What I'm going to do is just pray for you guys right now corporately. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pray for some people because we're getting late. I'm going to pray for a few people over here, see what God wants to say to them and, and do for them. But I just want to pray for you guys that the Lord would open your, 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 your eyes in the spirit so that you can see. And I believe some of you are going to give me so many testimonies of how God has awakened you to be able to see deeper in the spirit realm. So Father, I just thank you for every person watching right now, now and in the future. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, Father, for your glory and for your story. This is for you, Lord. These people are on here. Over 1,500 people are on here right now because they want to see in the Spirit. I ask you to open their eyes to the things of the Spirit, Lord, the same way you allow me to see. Allow them to see. We need people that can see in this hour. So precious Lord Jesus, hear your servant. And I pray right now you open the eyes of these people to see in the see the angelic realm, see the things of the Spirit, to go into depths they need to. And I pray right now all eyes be purified from unrighteousness. All bodies be purified from unrighteousness. Sanctify them, Lord, for your, for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, receive this grace. Amen and amen. Amen. If you receive, put, put I receive in the chat. I receive. If you feel like you've received and you've learned something today, put I receive in the chat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. This is wonderful. See, this is why I'm going to go in more of a teaching mode because I'm looking up here. You guys love to be taught in this hour. So we're going to be teaching, teaching, teaching. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, praise God. Look at the chat over here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is good. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pray for some of these people in the Zoom audience over here, guys. And um, then at the end, hang in here, guys. We're going to pray for everybody uh, at the end and then we'll, we'll call it. But man, what a wonderful teaching today on how to see angels and just some testimonies. And I brought scripture and talked about some other things. I like coming on here doing these uh, teaching things because it just takes us deeper and it, it lets us know that there's more. There's always more. Hallelujah. And you'll be able to go back. This teaching will be up. Like I said, I'll put all the scriptures in the chat and stuff like that so you guys can go back. Um, also, guys, uh, we're, soon we'll have uh, TSNL Global Outreach Foundation up and stuff. I have plans to build a studio I want to have a studio, and I want to have it where I can have an in-person audience, which we'll be able to do by uh, some stuff like that. So I got some plans here in the future for a studio. Uh, I just I moved not too long ago, so I'm still in just a room, but we got plans here to do a lot with the supernatural life. Um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So more people can come in person. Oh, I'm, there's a lot that's going to be built. There's a whole vision that we're going to release here soon. But y'all just hang tight, keep praying. We want things to to grow and glow for Jesus. Amen. All right, let me bring the Zoom screen up. Make sure I bring the right one up. Yeah, this is the right one right here. All right, so here's here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to pick some of you guys over here on Zoom. Now, look, there's a lot of you. Um, I hope you guys, we, we're still going to have the mass deliverance Zoom tomorrow. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a lot of these teachings. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities to come on and uh, be prayed for and stuff like that. And then we have so many in-person meetings. But I'm going to pick some of you today. And then I'm going to pray mass uh, prayer for everybody. Let's see what happens. Let's see what God has in store. Amen. Lori. There you Hi. go. Hi. How you doing? Wow. Hey, I'm good. You kept Thank you. You, you kept you kept catching my eye when I was when I was teaching. There's a re, you you kept catching me oh, by the I'm spirit. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Yeah. I kept seeing you. Like several times, my eye just came to you. So I know the Lord wants to do something for you today. My heart is pumping. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I'm from Hawaii, so it's warm here. Um, I've been watching you for like five months, um, like right after my husband had left me. Oh, wow. I saw you and... Um, stayed committed to your teachings and um I just want to know like why this happened to me and um 
am I supposed to be waiting for him or um I don't know I'm really confused do you have a big family I do do you have a brother I have two brothers there's something with the brother something entered in through a brother there's something there's something there's something that happened that 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 is I'm hearing something with brother brother is there anything significant with the brother that popped right in my spirit as you were speaking no um i i don't know you know you know as we're growing up and stuff sometimes there could be picking there could be you know there could be some traumatic stuff is anything of that nature ever happened uh i I think I was because I was close with my second brother. Um, we had a close relationship, and then he had a girlfriend that became his wife, and she didn't want me to be around. Mm. Want me around? So now watch that. The, watch the, that. Watch this. I'm gonna take you somewhere. The spirit's leading, right? So your husband left you, right? I'm actually. That was my second husband. Did it? Did they both leave you? They both left you. To be honest, I left my first husband, okay. and then I, I repented and asked the Lord to forgive me, and I wanted it to be right the next time. And so this next one, I thought he was the one, and my pastor had married us, and and then he just left me. We went to Korea, and he just upped and left me. The second one. And I, we were going to church, doing Bible studies, and. So you hear the word, the word you hear the abandonment. Abandonment is huge. Was your was your mom and dad together? Yeah, they're still married. Watch this. When that thing, how were you with your first husband when your brother and the wife thing happened? Uh no. Um, my brother, that thing happened when I was young. That's so that's okay. So I should have reworded that right before, before you were married, that happened uh -huh. before your brother got married. What I believe the Lord is telling me is that a spirit of abandonment came in, in that moment and you felt rejected and abandoned. And this is what's caused these situations of abandonment and rejection to manifest now, I know that you it's hard to believe that and it's hard to go, why, how could that be associated with that or how could that be happen? But all it takes is one of those moments to happen in our youth and it will cause the things it can cause it to happen throughout life. And that's that feeling of abandonment and rejection sneaks in and then causes it to happen in multiple places or brings some the enemy brings things into your life that causes abandonment to happen. Now, first of all, we're going to get this guilt, shame and condemnation off your life. OK, the Holy Spirit has highlighted that the situation with your brother brought something into your heart and brought something into your life. And I know that you have a hard time understanding. You've had a hard time with double mindedness because of the mistakes you've made and because of stuff. Even as I'm speaking to you now, it's hard for you to dialogue spiritually because you've been so blocked and turned off. But what I'm about to do for you is going to set you free but for the glory of God. And you're not going to suffer with this anymore. And the prayers that you have been putting up, even as you prayed, you've said, God, do you even hear me? I'm such a failure. I've messed up so much. Would you even listen to me? Uh, I'm here to encourage you that God does listen to you and that God does hear you. And he is hearing everything you're saying. And the deliverer is on the scene today. The restore and the reconciler, the reconciler, the reconciler is on the scene today. Miracles happen when Jesus steps on the scene. Do you know that? So... Get yourself in a place to receive. We're going to set you free from this, okay? Father, I thank you right now. Right now, by his word, by the truth that sets free, I command the root of abandonment and rejection that came in her youth, that has followed her to this point, that has tried to sabotage her and steal from her, I command you to release her now. Yeah. Be loosed from all that guilt, all that shame, and all that condemnation. Open your eyes. Now do me a favor. Take a deep breath. All right, take a take a deep breath. 
You see that? You're restricted in your breathing. Uh, you need to be able to breathe. Put your hand on your chest. Watch this. Now wait. Watch. Watch. Looser. Wait. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. All the heartache, all the pain, loose. All right, now take your hand down. I want you to breathe. Ah, a little better. Do it again. Hey, look at that. Do it again. Ah, you're getting deeper now, are we? Come on. Yeah, the weight has to come off of you so you can receive by the Spirit. Now, now I'm going to ask you something. I want you to put a demand here. What do you want the Lord to do for your relationship? Cancel the divorce. You want reconciliation, right? Or my marriage. Okay. How long have you been married? Not long. I just don't want another marriage. Uh, 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 uh. Start all over. Uh, uh, uh. I understand, but be careful with what you say because you limit yourself because of pain and trauma that's happened in your life. Just say, Lord, whatever you want. You got to say, Lord, whatever you want, because you're still what I want. You see, Lord, what do you want? Lord, whatever you want, not what I want. Exactly. What his will is, is what you want. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, I need to, I need to ask you this before I can really pray for you and prophesy right to you. Do you believe you're worthy to receive? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that your mistakes are bigger than God's grace? No. Do you believe? God's grace is bigger. Exactly. Do you believe God can restore what the enemy tried to sabotage? Yes. Okay. And I'm standing on his promises. Let me tell you something. By the word of the Lord, this is what I tell you. After today, miracles will happen, restoration will happen, and reconciliation will happen. Put your knees to the floor and thank the Lord and thank him for his goodness and mercy in your life. God is going to restore everything the enemy broke. You'll see. He will have his way Amen. in your life. Amen. Do you believe this? Yes, I receive this. Okay. How, do, are you confident in that? I have nothing else. All I right. receive it. All right. It's because all you got right now is hope, right? Then, Lord, I pray right now you commission angels to come snatch that husband. And bring him back into his household. In Jesus' name. I pray angels to be commissioned right now. Lord, send them. Send those angels to snatch him by his collar and bring him back home. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May abandonment not be on your home. May rejection not be on your home after today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, Writ Written upon her heart are my promises. Remember that the law is not written on tablets anymore. It's, writ it's written upon our hearts. Written upon your heart is God's promises. If you're his daughter, will he give you a snake? No. If you're his daughter, will he give you a fish? Of course. He'll give you good thing. Good gifts come down from the Father of lights. Amen? Amen. Okay. Then say this. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For restoring everything. For restoring everything. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you, you serve the Lord until things get back to where they're supposed to be. Amen? Yes, amen. Don't, do not focus on the negative. You can't focus on that. You have to. Now it's forward focus. Do the things. Seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen? Yes. Ain't it, ain't it wonderful the miracle God's going to do for you? It's going to be beautiful. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> God bless you, Lord. Hey, Aloha. hey, yes. Rejoice and continue to worship. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes, Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Come on. Guys, I want to teach you something, okay? When you receive a word from a man or woman of God that you know that is sent by the Spirit, that is sent by the Holy Spirit, like that, I'm talking it can change. And listen, I'm not here to exalt Daniel Adams. I'm just telling you, I know who I come come from. I know who, who has sent me. I know what assignment I'm here to do. Receive it as from the Lord. I'm telling you, your life will change. It's a promise. It's a promise. The word will not, what? The word will not return void. God is not a man that he shall lie. If you follow the biblical instructions, you will see the breakthrough and you will receive your blessing. Amen. Amen. And get a word. That's right. And hold on to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't let the, the ravens come and steal from us, right? Jen, how you doing? Miss Ratliff. Hello. Hello. How are you? Isn't, isn't it usually when I see there's two names, right? Yeah. My husband, Alan. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, so how can we pray? Um, actually, I just was wanting you to pray for my granddaughter, Rosalie. She's got, um, well, the doctor says that she has scimitar syndrome, which is a lung and a heart disorder. Uh. And they've spoke death over her since before she was born. And <clears throat> she's perfectly fine right now. Uh, but she's got to go to the 27th for them to do an MRI of her lungs and her heart. They're determining the um, open heart surgery, which I'm not accepting. So... Is she is she with you? No, she's not. She's with her mommy. Do you have she's a, two? Do you have a? Are you going to see her? Yes, I will tomorrow. Do you have a bottle of water? Yes. Can you get the bottle of water and bring it back? Yes. Do you have? Now, it, do you have it with you? Yeah, I can go get it. Go get it. Okay. I'll talk to people while you do that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you guys know where I'm going with this, right? Come on. Oh, you hear that? The crumbling of the, the, the bottle of water is coming out of the package. This is good. I'm back. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray over this water. And I believe the healing power of God will come upon that water. When she drinks that water, she'll be healed. Amen. Do you believe that with me? Oh, yes. Do you have any doubt? No. Okay, you got me and uh, over 1,400 people right now being in agreement with you. You ready? Yes. Your daughter's two, Your granddaughter's two years old, right? Yes. Okay. Father, I thank you for that bottle, bottle of water that is in her hands. Lord, we remember in the pool of Siloam how Jesus healed a blind man and at the pool of Bethesda, how they wanted to get into the water to be healed because the angel stirred the water Lord, we believe that that water that has that same quality is in that bottle right now. I command by your power, Lord, and your authority, that water to bring healing to that two-year-old granddaughter. The enemy shouldn't dare not touch, put his hand on her. That healing property to be in that water right now. That healing power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, when you take it to her, let her drink of that bottle. I believe she will be, she will be healed. Amen. I believe it. Amen. And that just means you got a healing anointing on you too, huh? <laughs> I receive that. <laughs> Amen. Was it, did you want anything else? Um, I just I need prayer for the clarity in my mind. I can't I can't focus. I can't remember much stuff. I try to read the word, and it's just goes right out. Really. I mean, the Lord, well, the Lord will bring things to me when I need it, but I just don't, I don't have memory like I used to. Mm. I study and study and study, and it's like it just doesn't stay there. Yeah, I'm, so, so I just, I'm just paying attention to, uh, to the spirit right now because I want to, it shouldn't be happening like that, you know, um, 
what, what dropped in what dropped into my spirit with the word I know that you said you're a grandma, but the word grandma, grandma, and then I'm seeing like the words M E R. Yeah, is that that bring any bells to you or? Or not the anything not anything in your family or anything like that. Who is your? What about your grandmother? I called her Mamma. Uh my real. She was my um, real close grandmother. She was. She was. Yes. Okay. Was she a Christian? Yes. Okay. M E R. What was her name? Jessie. Her name was Jessie. What 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 is what is significant about her? So she you were really close to her. She's my um my dad's mom. She would always take me instead of my dad. So she would always be the in place of my dad. Okay, so the reason the, the Lord is showing me this really, uh, really strong for a reason. There's something here connected to what you said uh, with your grandma. Was she, so she was like a comfort to you. Yes. And she was a yes. big. She was a big voice to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I could it could have been Mamma, but I was mer, mer, yeah. it was something Mary, something M E, something. Is what it was. I was seeing the words M E R. Lord, bring clarity to that. So, so what? Your name is uh, Jen. What is the middle name? Do you know the middle name? Nicole, your middle name. My middle name. Yeah, my middle name. You don't Nicole, know your. Yes. You don't know your grandmother's. She didn't have a middle name. I don't think. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm not. Gonna, <clears throat> I'm not going to dig any deeper until the Holy Spirit brings revelation. Sometimes He'll show that. Okay. And, you know, I see in part, prophesy in part, right? Um, yes. Um. So your grandma. Here's the thing. Reason I think your your grandma's big significance because she was a source of comfort and she was a source of advice. Is that correct? Yes. So so you lost her when. 2007. 2007. Okay. That's been some, yes. and was that significant for you in, in a time of switching uh, spiritually and stuff like that? It was before I got saved. I got saved in 2011. She's the only one that took me to church when I was little. Hmm. Okay. So there was a source that, so there you go. There was a disconnect. I believe somewhere around there, there was a disconnect and it's, it's made things uh, uh, foggy for you. So the Bible verses mm -hmm. that come to me is that the Holy Spirit is the comforter and that he mm -hmm. is also the teacher. So right now you need to come into a season where the Holy Spirit uh, teaches you and comforts you and you need to allow this to happen. And I think he's also showing the grandma as a relational thing because the Holy Spirit was using her. You know what I'm saying? So the mm -hmm. way the Holy Spirit used her to teach, to bring you advice, to take you to church, that's the same thing that the Holy Spirit, in a greater way and in a greater dynamic way, he wants to do for you. You see what I'm saying? Also, yeah. I think a mantle has been passed down to you from your grandmother. I think this is something that you should have you, you should have caught, that nurturing, that helping, that comforting. I think all of this is upon your life. And I think, you ever heard the saying, you're your own worst enemy? Mm -hmm. You ever been told that? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're your own critic, right? If yeah. you're, if you're consistently <laughs> criticizing, it's hard to know the Holy Spirit. It's hard to know mm -hmm. the comforter. It's hard to know the teacher. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so I believe that mantle has passed. It's time to pick it up so that it continues on in the generations. And also I believe after today, I'm going to pray for you and everything that has been blocking or hindering will be broken so that, so that you can now accept the comforter and the teacher in your life. So the word will be highlighted and come alive to you. Would you want that? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Put your hand on your head. Father, I thank you right now for Jen. I command every hindrance, all double mindedness and all doubt that has infiltrated this woman's mind. I break its power now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that that mantle that followed that bloodline, that she will pick that up and continue on the call. Lord, you have picked many and you are picking her. You're picking her. You're highlighting her to be a chosen one in this hour, in this family, to carry this call, to carry this destiny. Lord, today, I pray that she will know the comforter. 
I pray today she will know the teacher, the Holy Spirit who teaches all things. May this come alive in your life like never before today. And may you no longer feel alone, orphaned, rejected, or or pushed to the side, or somebody that isn't uh, accepted and isn't like everybody else. May you stop feeling different in the wrong way. May you stop feeling overlooked in the wrong way. The Lord says you are accepted. I've chosen you and I've marked you. He says, how much more will I not comfort you and teach you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Thank you. But I want to, you know, one of the things is like when God shows me somebody's family member, you know, like the grandma, there's something very significant. You know, there's a reason he highlights certain types of family members and stuff like that. So really dwell, not dwell, but really, um, really say, Holy Spirit, what in those seasons of my life do you want to highlight? And do you want me to take into these new seasons? You see what I mean? She was such a giver. She would take her shirt off for anybody. She was just like a, she just, she never spoke ill of anybody. She was just the best. She was just like an angel. <laughs> she just, yeah. she always took away from herself to give to everybody else. So they say when you have the gift of giving to give, right? So yep. then, so, do, so maybe you have that on your life. Do yeah. You, my husband's, he, he, he adds the checkbook at church. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll give it all, I'm right? Giver. Yeah. Okay. So now we're, now we're getting more into something. So there's a mantle right there. There's a giving mantle, but also giving is the access gate to, uh, access, uh, port point to more, you know, you can't out give God. Mm-hmm. You ever heard that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so the more you help, the more you get, but obviously with discernment, obviously and wisdom. Yes. Oh, but, of but I, I feel if your grandma had that no, you can't, you can't out give the gift of giving. Does that make sense? Yeah. You will always yeah. have enough, more than enough. Yeah. All right. Now, now, I'm, now I feel the spirit open, the Holy Spirit open, opening some things. You know, I really feel even after saying this right now, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the Lord is going to show, show you something that's going to really break some, some doubt off. I really felt like I heard the Lord say, get ready because I'm about to pay some of her bills pay some of her bills. I don't know if you have any bills that need to be paid. All of us do, right? We all got something that we want to pay. Oh yeah, we all do. Yeah. But so there's some things you're going to see God's hand in. He's going to really start paying some things off. This is a season of the payoff. That's what I hear the Lord saying. This is a season of the payoff. All of your giving has not been done in vain. All the heart of, of, of giving has not been done in vain. So you're going to see the payoff. And I even feel like this is going to bring a greater level of faith into your husband's life. I feel like this is going to bring him into a level of belief that you never thought he would have. He's going to be like, how is this getting paid? This don't make any sense. What's going on? And then you're going to be able to go back and say, hold on. This this is the season, baby, of the payoff. The Lord is paying Amen. things off in this season. Amen. I received that. Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm just I've, seen, I've seen so much since I've been saved. It's just unreal. I mean. You take three skirts to church, Dan, somebody and somebody gives you six skirts back. I mean, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Amen. You don't even expect it, but it does. <laughs> yeah. The Lord knows you're a giver. So he brings you into the season of the payoff so you can pay off more. Right. Unexpected money is what I call it. Unexpected money. Money like what? what is this from? How? Who's, why are you giving me this? Why is this in the mail? Why is this happening? Those type of things. You see? Oh, yes. So test, just, just do me a favor. Just testify. That's all I ask you to do. Just testify when it starts breaking forth. Oh, I will. Most definitely. I love to testify about the Lord. That's all. He's just everything to me. Yeah. So next time you come into the zoom over here, or you catch me on an email or something, be like, Hey Daniel, I got a testimony. It's crazy. What's happening. You know? Oh yeah. So I'll write it down. And if I forget it, (laughs) (laughs) Amen. (laughs) I'm not going to forget it though. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, Jen, make sure you send your regards to your husband. I look forward to hearing about the miracle for your granddaughter and also hearing the miracle of your family of on your family's okay. life. Okay. Amen. I will tag you in a post um, after the MRI because I'm, they told me that if it, she didn't have to have that surgery that they would have, somebody would write a book and I told them to get a pen 
their pen ready because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Look, now that's faith. I like that. I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, we appreciate you too. Well, glory to God. I can't wait to hear the testimony. Okay. Amen. Thank you. All right. See ya. You know, quick testimony I want to share. When I was at Global Vision Bible Church, a man who had throat cancer, I told him uh, in a meeting, he came up to a meeting and I said, the Lord says do a three-day dry fast and you'll be healed. You know that man came up to me, he did a three-day dry fast, and he came up to me at the Global Vision Bible uh, Church, the, the what do you call it, the conference that we did, and he told me that he was completely healed. He said that his he still got a scratchy voice, but the cancer was gone. He said the doctors were 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 rocked. So, you know, it works. It works. That dude was so happy. It was it was hilarious. He was so happy. Jesus healed him. Sharon Law, how you doing, brother? Praise the Lord, brother. Gab Gab I'm just desperately waiting. I was telling God, please, please, I need help. Amen. What happened yesterday was Sunday night. I finished my um, night shift. I work as a nurse, came back home, started the fasting. Then I had to sleep because Monday night I had to work again. <clears throat> I literally couldn't sleep. This is the first time in life, uh, uh, sir. And uh, there was a spiritual warfare going on. And I could hear the enemy saying, look at your past. And it was like it was coming very heavy on me. I said, Lord, no, I choose you above my past. Right. Uh, that's one thing. I'm very sick right now, uh, sir, and my throat, actually, I'm not able to swallow anything. It's just something is caught here, and I'm very feverish. I'm li li literally very sick. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's the spiritual something that it has to do with. My wife, Angel, is here. Um, a few days ago, there was part deliverance done, uh, but I believe there's still a legion inside, and uh, it actually tried to kill my daughter when she was in the womb five, six months ago. Because it told me that I told your wife to drink, uh, eat cinnamon, turmeric, all the hot things so that your child dies. <clears throat> Thanks be to God, brother, and saints of God, that my daughter is alive. She's fine. I have a son as well, three-year-old. And we have been literally waiting on God. Jesus, we need this deliverance, and we want to be okay. baptized by the Holy Spirit as well. Her body is shivering now. Probably it will manifest soon. Um, our son is three years old. He isn't eating food. And uh, what, literally, what he, he depends on milk, and he's not able to talk as well, although he's three and a half. Um, that's one thing. So three things, uh, sir. And literally, I want to serve God. That's my, that's my hope. My dad is a reverend. My parents have been missionaries in northern part of India. My brother serves in a church uh, in Bangalore in South India. And uh, I've said, Lord, this, this year will be a next level for me and my wife. We're not going to live the same normal Christian life. We want to go ahead to the next level. Mm. Over to you, sir. Amen. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Bangalore, India, and my wife is from Delhi, <coughs> from the northern part of India. Okay. And uh, we have settled down here in London. We did come to the Epsom meeting. That was where God caught me. Wow. And he said, you need to forgive. And I literally in the service said, Lord, I forgive everything. Immediately, I felt light in my body. So I realized, yes. There was something that was holding me back. Mm. But now, no more Satan, no more. No more, that's <laughs> right. So do me, a, do me a favor. Yes, sir. I'm going to pray for you first, and then I'm going to pray for your wife, okay? Put your, look, 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 look. Put your hand on your head like this. Jesus. So Jesus. listen, I'm going to encourage you. The Lord says you're marked, okay? Yes. I, saw, I saw on your forehead <laughs> a, a vision of a cross. So the Lord says you're marked. I'm going to pray for you. Put your hand back on your forehead. Sorry, sir. Yeah. All right. Your name is uh, what? What is your name? Uh, Sharon, Sharon. And my wife's name is Angel. Watch. Father, I thank you for Sharon. There's by no chance that he's on here. Lord, your grace is sufficient. You showed me Amen. he's marked. I command by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, his throat to open and every hindering thing to loose off of him now. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Hey, now look at me. Yes, sir. Do you have anything to drink? Um, pani, water, like uh, Yes, my wife is. Uh, yeah, I have a bottle of water, sir. Drink it.
इनको बताओ लोरा वगैरह से भी बात करी थी Can you swallow? I can swallow, sir. Just slight pain, just this region, just that one ring. All right. Now put yeah. your put your hand on your throat. Loose his throat now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, now don't 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 say anything. I command right now his throat be healed. I command every hindrance to loose him now. Every sickness to loose him now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus name now swallow again drink the water again Believe believe drink You tell me Slight pain it's a little better but slight pain Okay. We're better? A little better. Okay. So where is your your wife? She's right here, sir. I'll pray. I'm going to pray for you again. I want to pray for your wife. Sure, sir. You want uh, to be Let's go. Of course. Uh so I'll just literally translate uh because my wife doesn't speak English, so. Yeah. I, I, I want to find out why why are you heavy? Which one body pain? She says she doesn't know. D does she feel heavy? आपको भारी लगा? बहुत ज़्यादा. Yes, she feels heavy. Does she want to be free? आप आज़ाद होने चाहते हैं? हाँ, बहुत दिन हो गए मुझे. Yes, she wants to be free. Yeah, tell her she's weared. She's she's weared down by life. आप ज़िंदगी से बहुत थके हो. हाँ. And she's carried yes. she's carried the responsibility of her family even since she was younger. अब बहुत छोटे बना से आप अपने परिवार को बहुत संभाल रहे हैं बिल्कुल ठीक है यस सर सो शी इज कैरिंग शी इज कैरिंग ए फॉल्स बर्डन आप एक झूठा बोझ उठा रहे हैं दैट इज मेड हर फील लाइक शी इज लेस देन जैसे आप आपको मतलब एकदम कम दिखाता दिखाता है एंड कॉल एंड कॉल्स हर टू फील अनवर्दी और आपको मतलब ऐसा लगता है जैसे आप लायक नहीं है हां यस यस शी फील्स द सेम सर Yes, today the Lord is going to set you free. Her mind is not in her control, sir. Yeah, and no longer will she suffer with this attack on her life. Amen. Tell her to look in my eyes. Yeah, come off of her life now. Amen. Nah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Leave this woman. <laughs> uh. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mighty name of Jesus. <coughs> Mighty name of Jesus. <coughs> eh. Come. Come. I said come. Ah. Eh. Come out of her body. You one clean demon. Ah. Huh? Yes. Out. Yes, you listen to the servant of the Lord. You leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. All that life heaviness, all of it. Holy Spirit I pray right now set her free. Just leaving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mighty name of Jesus. Oof, yeah, get something man. Oh. <laughs> 
Come all the way out in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. You better get a trash can or something, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, let it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Oof. If you can hear me, yeah, yeah. Hey, demon, you hear me. I know you do. What are you doing to her? What are you doing to her? Answer the question. I destroy her. Ah, you speak, huh? I see. How long have you been in there? How long have you been in there? You speak English. How long have you been in there? Come on, talk. Stop showing off. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How long have you been in there? Stop it. Stop it. I said stop it. How long have you been in there? If you're a demon, you must submit to the authority of the Lord. I asked you right now, how long have you been in there? Huh? 2006. 2006. Uh, how did you get in? How did you get in? I don't know. You do know. You can't lie to a servant of the Lord. Now answer me. How did you get in? S stop how did you get in cut it out how did you get in hmm family okay what did the family do black magic ah black magic let me ask you something you're not stronger than jesus right hmm yeah. You are stronger than Jesus or, or no? Yeah. Exactly. You're not. Can you stay in this girl? Does she want you there? Does she want you to stay in her? No. Yeah. Then guess what? That means you have you have to leave. You have no choice. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. I command by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, you leave this woman now. Leave this woman now. Everything, yeah, everything that came through black magic, leave now in the mighty name of Jesus. Back to the abyss. If she loves Jesus and she doesn't want you, you come out, you stop making her look this way. Come out of her. She loves, but I don't. Huh? Say that again. She loves Jesus, but I not. Oh, that's good. You're not supposed to love him. You he he you're going back to the abyss. You're not coming back anymore. Now come out of her body. Father, I pray right now, send angels to get this demon out. Pull this demon out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There it comes. There it goes, yeah. <laughs> the angels are pulling you out. Your wife your wife is being set free. Yes, sir. The angels are helping to set her free. Thank you, Jesus. When she, Hey, listen to me. I proclaim you free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tell your wife, say you are free in Jesus' name. Yeah, get it out. 
Tell her to cough it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cough it out. The job the job is done. Cough it out. Cough it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell her to cough it out. Uh, y'all. Some of y'all are so funny in the chat. How much she's getting paid? You just, you just don't like it that Jesus is real. That's your problem. You can't deny it. I love it. I love it when I see these in the chats. Like people, like I took the time to go to UK and pay. Y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. <laughs> Hey, uh, talk, talk, the husband, talk to me. Now, I, I want the husband, you talk to me, Sharon. Sharon, talk to me. Yes, yes sir. I'm going to ask you a question, okay? Yes, sir. Have you remained, have you, now I'm, it's a personal question, is it okay? Yes, sir. Have you remained faithful to your wife? Um, have you fell yes, in, have you fell into any pornography or anything of that nature? Um, I don't think so. Okay. As far as I know, sir. You don't think so? Well, any recent? I'm not in any any. Okay, any recent thing? Nothing recent, sir. I've okay. given all the love that she needs. Okay, I've been I'm, taking care of my family very nicely. Amen. I'm just checking. I'm just checking, brother. But let, yes, I got scared for a minute. No, 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 no. Don't get scared. But but don't also don't be ashamed if you did make a mistake. You understand? Yes, sir. God, you want God's grace to cover you. You know, amen, amen. Let me, let me. So your 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 wife. Hey, let me speak to her again. Look at me. Hey, hey, hey. Get get your strength. Get your strength back. Look, 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 look. Get strong. Get strong. Get strong. Talk to me. You talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Listen. Are you are you? I want need you to answer me a question. Are you starting to feel lighter? Uh, she feels a little lighter, yes. but her dead her dead sister is appearing in front of her. Her dead sister. <laughs> dead sister, yeah. Uh, both of her cousin sisters did not survive. Has For she... some reason, they died. Does she see the dead sister in front of her now? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think she's standing in front of her. She can see her. So tell her to say this. Tell her to say to the familiar spirit, say, I command you. I to leave yes, she's saying that. to stop a, to stop appearing to me to stop appearing to me appearing to me i command this familiar spirit i command to i command this i command this familiar spirit familiar spirit that has come from my family that has that has come, come from my family come from my family to le to loose me now to lose, to lose me now, and not appear to me anymore, and not, and not appear to me, appear to me anymore, anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, now, Amen. now watch this. I command this familiar spirit that's come through the family bloodline leave her body. The spirit that's masquerading as her sister come out of her body. Yeah. Yeah, you've been given the command. You can't stay. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ, leave her body. Yeah. You cannot fight the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Come out of her body. Yes. All the way. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of family family stuff here. <laughs> hey, Sh Sharon. Oh uh, yes, sir. Are y'all in? Are y'all in a hub? Oh uh, yes, we are. Uh, I'm I'm part of the foreigner uh, thing and. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in fact, Mark, Mark, Mark and Laura said that they will pray for us as well this evening, 8.30. Okay. But it was God's plan that he spoke to you. So. Amen, amen. We're happy. <laughs> yeah. Do you still see your dead sister? 
आपको आपके मरे बहन दिखाई देती है मेरे साथ खाना खाते जब बिना खाना खाते मुझे लगता है मेरे साथ कोई खाना खा रहा है Uh, whenever she eats food, she feels that someone is eating uh, with her, eating food with her. And me, को सपने में बहुत मेरे को कोई ले जाके कोई कहीं कहीं घुमाता रहता है सपने में कभी इंसान खाते में कभी graveyard वगैरह में जाता है. The spirit takes her in a dream to graveyards sometime and shows her stuff, tries to scare her actually. Yeah, she, you know, you know, your wife, your wife has a very strong prophetic ability on her. It's just, it's, it's just the enemy. The enemy has really. Brought her down, tried to really press her down, you know. Let me let me let me tell you who I see your wife is by the spirit. Can I tell her who I see she is? Yes, sir. Now listen, I'm gonna tell you what I see by the spirit. I'm not. I'm, I, there's if the more deliverance has to happen. Hold on, let me prophesy to you. You are you you are you are chosen to be a preacher. Do you know this? आपको प्रभु ने सेलेक्ट किया यस आई नो प्रभु ने मुझे चुना आई नो यू आर अ यस 2050 यस yes. यू आर अ बोल्ड प्रीचर ऑफ द गॉस्पेल आई कैन सी दिस यू विल स्पीक लिसन यू विल स्पीक विद फायर एंड यू विल प्रचार करोगे एंड यू विल एंड यू विल डू लिसन लिसन दिस इज गोना साउंड वाइल्ड इवन फॉर एवरीबॉडी वाचिंग यू विल डू क्रूसेड्स फॉर द लॉर्ड आप बड़े-बड़े मीटिंग करोगे प्रभु के लिए आवे You will do crusades for the Lord. Your divine destiny is to preach the gospel. You will do crusades. You will have evangelistic meetings with your husband. You will do this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Many, many souls will be saved through your life. The hand, yeah, your prophetic destiny must birth. The hand of the enemy has to come off of your life. It can no longer be there any longer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I speak to every unclean spirit that has attacked this woman. You listen to me now. She will preach. She will do crusades, and she will destroy the kingdom of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. She will do what her family did not do. She will be the difference maker. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, she will set the captives free, and she will see things by the Spirit that sets other peoples free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you say these words? Can you say I receive this prophetic word? I receive this. I receive this prophetic word. Prophetic words for my God-given destiny. My my God gives given destiny. Destiny. God is bigger in my life. God is bigger in in my life Amen. than any demon. And any demon. Have you spoken tongues yet? आपको अन्य भाषा का वरदान है नहीं नो सर से होली स्पिरिट होली थैंक यू फॉर हर लाइफ लॉर्ड जीसस फिलर फ्रॉम द क्राउन ऑफ हेड टू द सोल्स ऑफ हर फीट ना लिसन बर्थ योर प्रेयर लैंग्वेज यूरिया Come on, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your tongue to loose for the glory of God. Even your, even your, come on. Raka yara rara basati andoro boseti anderebe. Come on, come on, come on. Raba baba siki yara batia. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, the enemy does not want you to receive your prayer language, girl. Come on. I command those demons to go down now. I command right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come forth. Come on. Brata yandoro bosiki ara ba 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 se. Ero mandare re re shiki ara ba sa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yep. Ron tara re re bosiki ara tara re re shiki ara tara shiki. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on. Ro ta yandoro bosi brata ti ara ba ba. Pore hondra. Yeah, keep speaking. Ya kayara mando ere mi shiti ara ra basata tiando. Shikara borla. Yeah, come on. Allah. Give me my prayer language. It's going. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You were doing it. Keep praying. Keep praying. Seti ando robo se vrata andere re re be shiti. Don't doubt. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Ro seti andere re be shiti. Andere re be si. Don't pay attention to the enemy. Come on. 
Yes, you too, Sharon. Let the tongues come forward. You, you got it. Keep going. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, Lord. That's it. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Now keep speaking. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, look at me. Look at me. You you're speaking in tongues. You're speaking in tongues, my friend. You can't tell. Come on. You just got you just got the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can do that anytime. Hallelujah. Now, yeah. you see, come on, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please give me my word. Jesus, please. You, you got you got it. Don't beg. Receive. Keep doing it. Yep. Yep. Chikandra ro 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 herondro chikandro ro 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 chikandro harar ramdro Hey come on Come on Hey look at that Main bolna cha rahi but mere chhati mein bahut jakdan jaisa jakdan jaisa Oh, she wants to speak, but there's something holding her chest. No, 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 no. You're being set free. The more you speak in tongues, the more you're getting set free. Yeah, you have the gift. Sharon. You see, your wife is filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, amen. I'm getting jealous now. Now you, now, now you, now you receive it. Amen. <laughs> Sorry about the background noise, sir. No, you're fine, brother. We love family. Sorry, let's go to another room so yeah. I can speak in peace. Your wife's in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh man. She comes she comes from a, a Hindu background, idol worship. And uh, she got saved around 2015. We yeah. met in 2017. 18 hey, we were married. Hey, hold on. Hey, that's why y'all ladies are so special. Y'all can do everything. Hey, props to the ladies. Come on now. Us, 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 men. I tell you, boy, we need some help, don't we? <laughs> so, look, you are, do you believe you can be, receive the power of the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hundred percent. Okay. Do you believe you can receive your prayer language? Yes, sir. Hundred percent. Okay. So, say this with me. Say, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I honor you. I honor you. And I know you are the baptizer. And I know you're the baptizer. In the Holy Spirit and fire. In the Holy Spirit and fire. I ask you right now. I ask you right now. To fill me. To fill me. And give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. And give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for Sharon. I pray right now from the crown of his head to the, holy, to the soles of his feet. I pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, baptize him in the Holy Ghost. 
and fire. Ebra mamba se vreti andu se by faith. Come on. Ye kiara mandu eri me si vratia. You can do it, brother. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nah, Hallelujah. Let it birth forth. Brati and the robo si vrati and tenere de shikiara. Thanks, Father. Worship any Father. Bless you, Jesus. Give thanks, Father. Now, Sharon. Worship him. Sharon, yes. Sharon. If you keep speaking in English, that is unbelief. This takes yeah. this takes faith. You just got a yara man tiara da de de shitia. You just let the words come out. So just don't worry about it, brother. Just let it flow like your wife did. All right. So Lord, I thank you for this man. I pray right now, Lord, drop that mustard seed of faith in him, Lord, so he can receive this in Jesus' name. Let him have confidence that he's going to be able to do this correctly and say exactly what you want him to say. Now receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, man. Burst forth. Yep, yep. All right, now form the words. Okay, so so we're getting there. Now look at me again. Look at, so you got to start. Look, that's good. You, right now you're ba 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 ba. Now what you do is you let the Holy Spirit grab by faith, right? Ebra mamba se re mi kayando ara me brombata yara ne ti ashatu vrata ne kiando. You just let the words start to flow. Don't have fun with it, man. It's faith. You come like a child. Now I'm gonna jump in and pray with you. Runti arara se kiana na ne de shi kiara mando ere be si kiara basato. Yeah. Rossi ti ando fata yanne de 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 shiki araba ba 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 se shiki araba se ti ande de 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 she okay now Sharon yes sir you got a little anxiety I can feel it yes sir be at peace brother you're you're trying to force this you like. You're like, you know, you got to be at peace, peace, relax, let the Holy Spirit lead you, you, relax, take it easy, man, everything is, you can, you can be at peace, all right, just take it easy, Now, now form the words. Okay. So now watch this. Now slow it down. Now look at me. Look at me, guys. This call. I'm not. I'm not teaching him i'm coaching him just so the so all the religious people know this is called coaching him not i can't teach him it i can coach him into it though all right so this is coaching him into tongues so listen you're going butter 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 you gotta let the words form Okay, I want to show you something. Do you see how you're going? So that's where you're starting to click in. All right, I felt a little bit of that anointing come on you. It's, you know, and you can get, you'll get confident with it. 
You know, it's just trusting it. It's trusting the Lord. Yes, sir. It's really, it's really not that hard at all, you know, yes. and it's a start. So what you do is now you take your time and when you're, I, I saw it. It's kicking in, brother. You, you're doing good. You're going. You're going to catch this all the way through, and you're going to fly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what you and your wife should do now? Y'all should take each other's hands and just pray in the spirit together. Yes, sir. And just just go for it. When the kids are asleep, you grab her hand. She grabs yours, and y'all pray in the spirit together. It will build your faith. It'll build y'all spirit, and then all this demonic noise and stuff will be gone. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I like you, man. You got faith to jump in there. That was good, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, cool. Sir, uh, initially you said your your mark. I see a cross. What did you mean actually by that? Yeah, when I was looking at you, I saw on your forehead there's a mark of the Holy Spirit. It's it's a mark. It's you're marked. And and you know, didn't you did you tell me your family were Christians? Uh, my my parents have been missionaries uh, north yeah. of India, sir. Yeah. yeah. So the Lord, sometimes, you know, I saw a burning cross in your head and that shows me that the Lord has marked you for the work of the Lord. Uh, yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, it's a family thing, you know, the, because of what your family has done for the Lord, you're marked, you know, so, the Lord, the Lord, as soon as I saw you, the Lord said, he's marked. So you are marked for God's work. You are marked for God's glory. And that's why I looked at your wife and I saw who she was too. So you will do amazing things for the Lord, my friend, Amen. Amen. you know, yeah, and, and, and look, here's the thing. There's no condemnation. If I say something, I said something to do earlier about being pure with, you know, purity and stuff like that. Um, never feel ashamed because that will block you off from the Lord. If, if you don't have to do it on this public platform, but if you ever fall into a place where you get in a place like that, if I'm not saying it's going to happen, never be ashamed to reveal it to a brother or sister close to you. Okay. Yes, sir. Does that help? Yes, sir. Okay, because look, you don't want no open doors for the enemy. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hey, well, look, I pray, I, I pray blessings over you and your family, and I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for his wife, for his family. I thank you for taking him from glory to glory and faith to faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sharon, I look forward to seeing you again. Oh, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. sir. Sorry, sir. Just the last bit, actually. Yes, for yes. My son, actually, he's three year old. Oh uh, yeah, he can't talk. Go ahead. Let's pray for him. Yes, sir. You want me to go to him, sir? Yeah, go ahead. Because you're going to lay hands on him. We're going to pray for him. Yes. <laughs> She's going in. Listen to her. Yes, sir. Okay. What's wrong with him? He doesn't talk? He doesn't talk much. He uh, doesn't eat food. He's only dependent on milk. And sometimes, spirit of disobedience, you tell him something, no, he'll do it. So Go get him. Yes. You got him? Is he with, Sorry, is he, is he with you? Uh, he ran away. I'll catch him now. I know. Where are you? I don't know. Come here. Come here. No playing. No playing. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come All here. I need you to do is hold him while I pray over him. Yes, sir. So, Father, I thank you for this little man right now. I command every mute spirit upon him to be loosed. And I command him to be able to eat appropriately in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. Here's what I believe also what has happened with you and your wife is going to fall down into the children. The blessing of the Lord is upon your home. I believe you're going to see the change that you've been looking for in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Of course. We'll see you soon. For the, I'll see you when I come back to Europe. Yes, sir. Sure. Amen. See you, man. Amen. And send a testimony when things change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, if you're watching, I'm going to do one or two more. But uh, as you guys are watching, listen to me sometimes. I'm hinting at things. I don't know if you guys ever catch me when I'm doing that sometimes. I'm being nice. That's all I'm going to say. I'm saying enough uh, not to get people in trouble, all right? But catch me sometimes. And you'll, if, you, if you know, you know. If you're prophetic, you'll catch me. You'll see what I'm doing. I got, there's got to be wise in this stuff. I want to say more, but I can't say as much as I want to say, you know, but I'm trying to respect. <laughs> Amen. There was somebody. Love Juana. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey, how are you, my friend? I'm doing wonderful. I, I could be a little bit better, though. I want to get married. Um, and I was just telling Brian Washington that I'm looking for someone to get married. He's going to be on fire for Jesus and be part of the TSNL family. So I'm, I'm here. I'm available. Amen. Amen. Where are you? Uh, where are you at? I'm in Destin, Florida, and I've been here uh, by myself for a whole year. And, you know, I'm really I got baptized last year, but I would like to be in my calling with Jesus Christ. And I just want to know if if I'm doing the right thing. Where, why the doubt? Um, I shouldn't have doubt. I do apologize. Um, ah, no, I think I'm on the right path. Don't apologize. Just, you know, yes. no need to apologize. Just asking questions, you know, try. I want the spirit. I want the spirit to lead. So one of the things you said, as soon as I come on here, you said, I want to be married. I'm available. That's what you said. <laughs> yes. it's, it's like you just put out to the whole internet. You're available, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that I feel like. Is There's that maybe like walls or something? So. Okay. Have you ever been married before? No, sir. Never. Wow. How old are you? I'm 37. Okay. 37. Okay. All right. And never married. You ha do you have children? Yeah. Do you have children? Uh, no, sir. I mean, I had to get a lot of deliverance also on um, like satanic strongholds. I know. Back in the day, um, there was this Wiccan friend who married me like through a satanic ritual and I had to renounce that. And I believe that Jesus has already been set me free. And so I just want to continue to glorify Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying. You know what I'm what I'm asking you is because I'm you know, I want the, I want the spirit to move. I want the spirit to speak to me, the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, you said something. You said walls. You said blocks. Right. Uh, you you yes. that means you probably got a pretty protected heart. Yes. Yeah. Are you are you scared of anything? I'm just. I have to work on trusting more, trusting the Lord, and trusting Jesus, and trusting myself also, and trusting others. Okay. So, what do you think put the walls up? Um, I think a lot of trauma and unforgiveness. It really was unforgiveness Are you with mad? my parents. Okay. Are you mad at men? Mm, sometimes, because I feel like they take a long time to make the first move, or I don't know. My perception could be a lot better. <clears throat> is 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 your big focus now? Is your big focus getting married right now? Is that a big focus of yours? Yes, it is. Cause I, I miss being like intimate, like in love and serving a family. I do miss family closeness, that sort of thing. Let me, let me see. Let me see something. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Your name's love Juana, right? No, it's Juana Winslow. Juana Winslow. Okay. Let me see something. Lord Jesus. I thank you for Juana. I pray right now, anything hiding, Reveal yourself now. Anything hindering or hiding, I command you, reveal yourself now. Mm. Hold on. Hold on.
Okay, I'm going to tell you something that I notice. I see the smile. Do you hide behind that smile a lot? I do, and I, I'm kind of mm. shy right now. I'm kind of, like, nervous. I know, I know. There's some, there's some hidden things. Things will come to the light. Yeah, things that have been hindering you from even going into relationship, things that have been causing people to, uh, you know, not be able to attract you, you know, that anything spiritual. Watch this. I command right now anything married to her in the spirit, I command you loose your hold on her now in Jesus' name. Everything now. Everything trying to sabotage her and steal from her. Not allowing her to go forward or walk into her destiny completely. I command it to be broken from her life now. See, now I'm starting I'm starting to see some things by the Spirit. You know what I'm seeing? What I'm seeing right now is is I see you in an angry state. I see a very angry state internally. Now I'm not saying this is expressed outwardly, but there's an internal it's like a frustration, an anger, a why. It's almost like, ah, you know, that kind of thing is what I'm seeing internally. And it's really masked by a lot of the external. Am I am I hitting on anything right now? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the state. So that's that's what I call the true state of how you feel. You know, it's all you know, it's like when, why, how, now. <laughs> you get what I mean? It's almost like a, I need this now type deal. And yes. in the midst of the I need it now, it's brought a level of frustration upon your life. So, so this is also, this can also be, I hear the words by my spirit, by the spirit, familial witchcraft. So family, f family witchcraft, has there been family witchcraft, maybe on the woman's side of the family, manipulation, control, things of that nature? Yes, sir. A lot of witchcraft and Jezebel. And I believe like Santa Morte had to renounce all of that mm. um, black magic. All of that nonsense. Yeah, 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 I think this is what has came on your life from the family and has also caused you to be in the state that you're in right now. And that's why the frustration is there. That's why the hindrance is there. I believe if you will open yourself up and you'll give me a shot at this, I'll get this witchcraft spirit completely off of you. And then your life will change and you'll walk into destiny. But also there's going to be a patience that comes behind it as the Lord builds some character in some areas so that when you're Boaz does walk into the scene, it's going to be something that you can sustain and that frustration will not come into that relationship. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> All right. You need to, you need to really trust me here now. Okay. Just for a moment, trust the Christ in me. I'm going to set you free. You can't worry about being on camera. If you want your freedom, okay. you can't worry about anybody or anything. You need to just know, Hey, I want my freedom. I want to be broken, broken free from this witchcraft thing on my family. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you, are you, are you okay with that? Yes. I want to be free. I really do. Okay. Then I'm going to speak to something in the spirit. Okay. You listen to me right now. I know you there. You're a witchcraft spirit. You've been afflicting her. You've been afflicting her blood, family bloodline. You can't have this woman anymore. I come as a servant of the Lord. I'm sent by the Lord to set Juana free. I command you right now. You witchcraft spirit that's caused the intense frustration, that's called the family stuff that's come down from the family bloodline, all that attack. I command you, loose her body now. Come off of her. Yeah, loose her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hmm? Come on. Come on. In the mighty name of Jesus. Perfect love casts out fear. I command the love of God upon her life to free her from this thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything, any heaviness on her chest, I command it to come off too. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything located in her heart or chest region, I command it to go. And I I heard something uh, uh, in your family. Does uh, does heart attacks run in your family? I'm not too sure, but I believe so. Heart I'm issues, sure. heart attacks. Mm -hmm. I never met my biological father, so I'm not. I don't know. I know my mom deals with blood pressure. Mm. So maybe that's what it is. Watch, watch, sure. watch. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ, I can't cancel every assignment of heart issues 
our heart attacks off of you now. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Everything attacking the heart, I command it to be loose now. In Jesus' name. As I pray, do you feel anything in your chest region? Yes. Before, I felt my heart was beating really fast mm -hmm. and a little difficulty breathing. I feel a little bit lighter now, a yeah. little bit lighter. Yeah, you, okay. you 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 will not you will not end up with heart issues like some of your family did. That heart the heart assignment the assignment against your heart has been broken, and this also is from from having a hopeless heart at times. The hopelessness, hope deferred, makes the heart sick because you've been hopeless about some of these things with the the men and and not having a husband and thing. All that hopelessness is being removed too, in Jesus' mighty name. So you're not going to feel that hopelessness in that area anymore. The Lord is removing hopelessness from your life so that your heart will be full and healed and you're able to move forward in the, in the call and destiny on your life in Jesus name. Thank you, Daniel. I'm really grateful. What do you, how do you feel about that? I feel really at peace. I feel at peace and I feel very um, determined and focused, but I feel really at peace and amen. I just want to be delivered. You know, if there's anything else come out of wow. me in Jesus mighty name. Well, we're moving by the spirit here. So the spirits revealed some things. I think we'll be okay for now. And, uh, that, you know, we're, we're walking towards our step and he step, uh, destiny. He ordains the footsteps of the righteous. So you're stepping on the stones that are going to lead you to your destiny. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you, my friend. And, uh, I think you're going to be surprised what happens after today. <laughs> Thank you. God Amen. bless you. God bless you, Thank my you, friend. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys. It's getting uh it's getting a little late here. So I'm gonna I gotta get get up here early, but I wanna pray over everybody. So I'm gonna let release some words of knowledge. Let me change my screen real quick. I'm gonna release some words of knowledge over people. And uh, I believe people are gonna receive some major things. All right. So just have an open heart. And uh, it's going to be good. So let me see. Is this the screen? I think this is the screen I'm looking for. Nope, that is not the screen I'm looking for. Is it this screen that I'm looking for? Be patient with me, guys. Ah, there's the screen I'm looking for. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to pray. Um, just be ready. <clears throat> everybody watching, not only people right here on the Zoom, but everybody watching, we're going to pray. And uh, I believe God's going to do some things. All right, by the Spirit of the Lord, I already heard in my heart ankle pain. Ankle pain's being released from people right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. And I heard by, my, by the Spirit, I want you to answer me as I say this. Rebecca, and I see the letter L. I think the last name or middle name is L. Rebecca L. Um, I feel like the Lord is stepping into the marriage situation that you're going through. He's going to bring healing into the marriage situation. Is there a Rebecca L.? on the chat anywhere. If it is, put yourself in the chat so I can see um, what's going on and uh, we can let these words of knowledge be confirmed. There's somebody on here, you, it feels like you're splitting uh, splitting headache literally right from the top of your nose area all the way to back to your head. I pray that be healed now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All these migraines I command to be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the right shoulder by the spirit spirit. Uh, there's it like, feels like a stabbing pain in the right shoulder. I command that right shoulder be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing by the spirit. People are going Daniel witchcraft attacks, every witchcraft attack. I command be broken off your life right now in Jesus mighty name, Jesus mighty name, every spirit of arguments. We command it to be broken off of people now in Jesus mighty name, Jesus mighty name. Yeah, ten, tendon, uh, tendon issues in the leg, right leg. I command be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Back issues, the lower back on the right side. It's like a sciatic issue. I, com I command this to be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said Rebecca L is her is a niece. Rebecca L is her middle initial. Come on now, Amen, Amen. I don't. I it was for marriage thing now. I command right now all HIV be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I'm seeing the nasal cavity, nasal issues be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Brian and Barbara. Brian and Barbara. There's a couple. Brian and Barbara. I'm hearing that name. BB. Brian and Barbara. Yeah. It's older couple I'm seeing by the Spirit. I command right now, be healed. Every Everything in your... It's like pain in the joints. Be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Yeah. Jesus' mighty name. Tense, tension in the neck, left side. I command be healed right now. See, people are getting healed right now. I see it. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, right pain in the right heel. Be healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Plantar fasciitis. Be healed. Yeah. Somebody has a um, paralyzed face on the left side. Your, 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 it's like your facial area on the cheek area, uh, lip area. Come back to life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I hear tailbone, tailbone by the Spirit. Be healed. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Cancers be cursed from people now. Be loosed. All cancer be loosed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Arthritis in the knuckles be healed. Yeah, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody wants me to pray for Brazil. I pray for the country of Brazil. We pray peace over that country right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that justice will be served appropriately and may the right people be in, in office in Jesus' mighty name. May all corruption be exposed and be loosed in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> in Jesus' mighty name. I heard in the spirit somebody mom, somebody's mom is on their deathbed. And I heard the name Martha. Yeah, meaning that they're in a it's like they're in hospice or something like that. I command right now life into your mother in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, life into your mother now in Jesus mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Somebody's been praying for the Lord to send them to the nations. Today the Lord says yes to the nations call. Yep, I see you smiling and laughing. The yes, then it's for you, right? In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> That's for you, Daniela. I see you smiling. Okay, we'll receive it in the mighty name. I'm here in Asia. You want to go to Asia? Yeah, I, 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 you ever thought about going to Asia? He might. The Lord might surprise you with that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know you may be a Europe girl or something like that, but Asia might be good for you. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just be impatient, guys. I want to listen to the Spirit of the Lord on this. Yeah. I'm seeing the right elbow by the Spirit. I pray that right elbow, stinging pain in the right elbow, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. I pray financial breakthrough in this season for people, too. Some people have been suffering for up to five years, just living check to check. I command financial breakthrough, jobs to be released unto people in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, mighty name. Now, some of you might go, why are you releasing jobs to people? Well, because I release jobs to people, literally. So, I mean, why not do it in the spirit, too? So, I release jobs to people. I can only give what I got, right? <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, anybody that needs a job, receive it. Receive better. Receive above and beyond right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I hear this by the spirit. Cycles, cycles of deliverance. You've been going through the same cycle over and over and over, and you're like, man, how many more deliverances do I need to go to? All you need to do is tell the Lord today, say the cycle stops. If that's for you, put it in the chat and let it be known. The cycle stops today in Jesus' name. The cycle stops today in Jesus' name. That's a declaration that the cycle stops today. I loose you from that cycle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Random accidents, spirits of sabotage. I break it off of people's life now. No more sabotage, those random accidents. That's crazy. I break that off of people now. Somebody recently, where you at on the chat? You you recently fell down stairs and you're limping. You ain't got a cast on or nothing like that. You're just limping around because you just, you had to fall down some stairs. Where is that person at? I know you're on here. I know you're on here. Somebody just recently fell. It's like a fall. I'm seeing outdoors, concrete steps. Is that anybody on here? Anybody in the chat? It's like bruised you up a little bit in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Okay. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking. I know somebody's going to come up with that. <laughs> Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> 
There they are in the chat right there. Yep. Be healed right now, Liam, in Jesus' mighty name. Naomi, be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, who's in a coma? Who's in a coma? Oh, man, I command right now. Oh, Marta. Okay, I command Marta be healed. And I command her to wake up now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, well, I said it. Yeah, wake up, Marta, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm seeing uh, the stomach. There's like a stirring. Somebody has a stirring in their stomach. Every time you eat, it's like weird digestive issues. There's a stirring in the stomach. If that's you, put your hand on your stomach. I command right now that stirring to stop and be healed right now. All digestive issues. You'll feel a burning in the stomach as you're being healed. Be healed. All that burning. Stop in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, in Jesus' mighty name. And I'm going to agree with anybody else who has a cough, even though I have a little one right now. I'm going to agree with for myself and everybody else. Anybody who has been dealing with a little bit of a cough, put, your, put it on your chest. I command right now in Jesus' name, mine and everybody else's that is suffering with a cough, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen, because I know a lot of people are dealing with congestion issues right now, so be healed in Jesus' name. Allergies, yeah, I heard that too. All allergies go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, people are being healed, man. It's crazy, all over the place. A lot of healings taking place. Somebody's sitting in a wheelchair. I see you sitting in the wheelchair. It's, a, it's an older lady. She's, you're sitting in the wheelchair. You've been watching me for a while, actually. I feel like I hear the Lord say, stand up. Stand up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You get up, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be instantly healed. Just stand up right out of that wheelchair right now by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. I'm going to also pray for anybody who had their eyes open to like uh, horror movies, anything to do with the P-O-R word, and all those things, I'm going to pray for your eyes to be purified from that stuff. I command right now purity in your eyes. Every unclean thing that came in through your eyes, I command it to be loosed off your life now. In Jesus' name. Some of you are haunted also by things you saw when you were younger. Like it entered into your spirit, and it's not, well, your soul actually. And it's just been really messing with you. So I command right now, the thing that happened to you when you were younger that brought that in, I command it to be broken off of you now in Jesus' name. Some of you are going to be instantly free now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All that stuff that happened to you in your young life, I break it off of you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Family stuff, family friends doing stuff to you, all that stuff, I break it off of you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free. All insecurity be broken from people's life now, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. All insecurity. In Jesus' mighty name. People who are having trouble loving themselves, I break that off of you too. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'm going to pray also for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. So anybody who wants that, just get yourself in a posture to receive and just say this with me. Say, Jesus Christ, I pray right now. You fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now just stay there and receive it. Just wait. You asked him, now receive. Oof, I even felt that. Yeah. Come, Holy Ghost. Fill him. Oof. <laughs> I love that. More, Lord, in the mighty name. Jesus Christ, be filled afresh. Some of y'all need that fresh feeling of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we love you, Lord. Fill us afresh, especially for this new year and this new season we're walking into. We thank you for the angels that are around. Yeah, we thank you. For, we acknowledge the angels that you've sent around us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
All right, guys. Well, that was our teaching on angels today. I hope you've been blessed. Hey, if you've been blessed, and since we're near the end, can you go ahead and put a number seven just to let me know you've been blessed? What a day. What a wonderful day. It was wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> we already got people rolling with the sevens over here. Th hey, also, you guys that are on Zoom, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for taking the time to come on here and just hang out and learn and listen and, you know, take time out of your night. This is how we grow, and this is how we go further with Christ. Amen? Come on, you guys are awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at all these sevens. Wonderful people. Y'all could be doing so much more, but you decide to come and just get fed the word. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. And look how many of y'all want to hang out with me on YouTube today. I want. I got to do more live stream. The Lord told me to do more live stream teaches, teachings. We got over a thousand viewers right here on YouTube. Y'all are hungry to be taught. That's what it is. The body of Christ is hungry to be taught the deeper things of the Lord in this season. So let's teach. Amen. Let's do it. We're going to do this more often for real. So, by the way, this weekend I'll be in Detroit. I don't know if anybody's close by there, but that's where I will be. I will be in Detroit this weekend. Then um, I'm heading to Israel. Some of you will be in Israel with me. And then we have so much. I got Thailand coming up, all kinds of things going on. I don't even know where I'm going half the time. But you can figure it out on events page. I believe they'll be updating that. Uh, amen. Some of y'all are driving the long drive. Come on now. Let's see. Let's see the glory of God manifest. I believe some awesome things are going to happen for real. Who knows? Some, there's always God's always doing something amazing. Yes, we will. We will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I look forward to meeting some of you guys. I'll make sure I take some time to talk with you and hang with you a little bit. Also, guys, if you've been blessed, please sow by all means. Sow where you grow, right? What, do you, what does uh, my friend say, Isaiah, don't dine and dash or something like that? So it ain't about the amount, it's about the heart. But if God says get big, get big always because we're kingdom work in ministry by, by far. All right, guys. Well, I will be back again, uh, hopefully on the giving links are up here. Maria's going to put them in all the chats for me. Uh, yeah, love you guys too. Look at all y'all's love. I love all of y'all. Y'all always showing me so much love. Yeah, we're the body of Christ, aren't we? We need one another. We need to hold each other's arms up and uh, keep moving forward. Got some big things coming. Big things coming. Always good to hang out with you guys. Awesome. Love it. All y'all, all y'all, my fam. We all family, huh? All right. Look, I don't want to get off here, but it's getting late, so I need to get some sleep. I got some things to do. Um, if you're if you're fasting with us, guys, we will have a 30-minute uh, prayer call, a corporate prayer call. I may take that on tomorrow. I don't know if I will be able to, but one of us leaders will take it on. Actually, I'm not, probably not going to be able to do the one tomorrow, but I'll be on Wednesday or, <clears throat> Wednesday or Thursday. But please come on corporately and pray with us. We have prayer points and stuff. We're believing for some big things, and we're also believing for your life. When we come together corporately and pray in unity, amazing things happen. Amen. Amazing things happen. We've got a great year ahead of us, a lot of big things coming up. Um, and anyway, guys, I guess that's it. I guess that's all. And also, if you're tuning in for the first time, become a forerunner. We need all the help we can get. All right, look, you know what I got to do. It is finished for now. <laughs> hey, we'll be back, guys. I promise. We'll be back here pretty soon. But for right now, we're done. Hey, I love you all. I pray blessings over all of you. I'll see you soon. God bless you. And let them angels work. Let them work. Open your eyes. See in the spirit. Hallelujah. See you guys. <laughs>